طيب يا شباب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم let's start with uh, our class today uh, which is our first lecture uh, on chapter 27 which is our last chapter on uh, electricity and it is about the analysis of electric circuits the simplest analysis let me say at the beginning that uh, according to the schedule the regular uh, syllabus this lecture is scheduled to be a review session but here I am starting chapter 27 because as you know we don't know really what will happen uh, in the coming days how congested will be the material so I will take every opportunity to catch up the material and explain it in uh, due time and that's why I am starting with chapter 27 uh, today so with this in mind uh, let's start with our class today. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, chapter 27 uh, is the last chapter we have in electricity and it is about the analysis of electric circuits. Uh, this is the last chapter in electricity. It has three main topics. The first topic, which is basically section one, it's really a collection of a lot of material a lot of scattered material from everywhere that we need to talk about, to discuss before we analyze uh, uh, electric circuits. So it is really a lot of scattered ideas all connected in section 27.1. And in the second section, 27.2, this is really the core of the chapter. It is about the analysis of multi-loop circuits. And here we need Kirchhoff rules to analyze multi-loop circuits. That is the subject of section two. The last topic, the last third topic we have in chapter 27 is uh, the topic of RC circuits. These are circuits in which the current vary with time. They are not merely DC circuits. And uh, this is the subject of section four. And we will do that uh, later on. So the way I will uh, deal with chapter 27 is I will divide it into, it has three topics, but I will divide these three topics into two units. The first unit is sections one and two because they are really linked together and that is the subject uh, we have here and we will start today discuss these two sections together and then start with uh, exam problems whatever is left and there will be a lot left will be covered on Sunday. Then on Tuesday I will cover the second unit of the chapter which is about RC circuit. So this is how I will divide this chapter. With this in mind, let's now start with section one. Section one, as I said, has a lot of scattered ideas. And before we start, let's list these ideas. So as we go along, you keep track of these ideas. First, we will talk about a new concept that is called the electromotive force, which is abbreviated as EMF. Then we will see or distinguish between single loop and multi-loop circuits. Then we will uh, talk about the voltage and current rules. How do we calculate the voltages as we go around the circuit? And then we will consider the combination of resistors. Then we will see how to calculate the potential differences between any two arbitrary points in the circuits. And finally, we will revise the concept of power. So let's go through these ideas. And as I said, as we go along, keep track of these ideas. We start the chapter with the concept of the electromotive force. Electromotive force, which is abbreviated as EMF, is any device that produces an electric field and therefore may cause charges to move around in a circuit. It's like the heat engine. What does the heat engine do? It takes heat from a hot reservoir, do work, that's what, what we want it to do, do work and expel some heat. The electromotive force is nothing but a source to provide an electric field. If we have an electric field, this electric field will drive, okay, force the charges to move. And if we have charges in motion, that's the electric current that we are looking for. We have many examples of electromotive forces. In the coming um, uh, chapters, chapters 27, uh, 8, and so on, the EMF device is basically a battery. That's how we will look at it. It's basically a battery. That's the function of the battery. It could be a power supply, which is something you see uh, in the lab. 
It could be anything else, anything that provides an electric field that drives the charges is an electromotive force. And for example, nowadays we can talk about solar cells. Solar cells are not in our minds like batteries, but they do the same thing. They produce an electric field that drives the charges and therefore produce an electric uh, current and therefore the solar cell is basically uh, an electromotive force. The symbol we use for an electromotive force is a script E, as I have an in the Arabia, and in a circuit we represent it by this special arrow, an arrow with a circle at the tail. That's the symbol that we use to uh, represent or uh, show the presence of an electromotive force. The source, whatever it is, the source moves charges to a higher potential and therefore produce an electric current. EMF has units of volts. Remember that the EMF produces electric potential, electric voltage, and the unit of electric potential is the volt, not anything else. And therefore, uh, here again we see a misconception from history. The word force is misleading here. It's not the force that we studied with Newton's laws, because this idea was brought up was studied before Newton came up with the specific meaning of the word force. Force was built with in a vague way. So anything that drives charges, even if it is a voltage, used to be called a force, an electromotive force. But remember that it is not a force, it is an electric potential, and therefore it has units of volts. And we have seen many examples of that. The zeroth law of thermodynamics, the convention of currents in electric circuits, all are examples of historical conventions, and here is another example of that. A real EMF, a real device like the power supply, has an internal resistance. An ideal one has zero internal resistance, but sometimes the EMF itself has its own resistance that you may have to take into consideration in a certain problem. Now let us distinguish between single loop and multi-loop circuits. First of all, what is a loop? A loop in the language of circuits is any closed path. Here is an example of a loop. It's a closed path for a current to flow. So we call this a loop and it is indeed a single loop. There is one single path in here. Compare that to what we have here, this is another circuit, which is a multi-loop circuit because it consists of many single loops. How many single loops do we have here? Well, this is one, this is number two, this is number three, the outer one is number four, and then these two will be number five, and finally these will make number six. Any closed path is a loop. So this multi-loop circuit consists of six single loop circuits. One of our objectives in this chapter is to calculate the currents in single or multi-loop circuits. If I have a circuit like this, I want to know how much is the current flowing in each branch of the circuit. Why do we care the current? Why the current in particular? Because if you know the current, you can find everything else. For example, the potential difference across a resistor, as we studied in chapter uh, 26, is given by Ohm's law, which is I times R. So if you know the current in the resistor, you know what is the potential difference across that uh, resistor. Likewise, if I am looking for the power dissipated in a resistor, again, as we saw in chapter 26, this is I squared multiplied by R. If I know I, I can calculate the power as well as the potential difference. Indeed, I can calculate the charge. Remember that I is dq by dt, so q is equal to integral of i dt. If I know i, I can integrate it and find the, uh, the charge. So uh, the current is the most important quantity. If we know it, we can find everything else. That's why we want to know what are the rules that we can follow to find the currents flowing in various branches in an electric circuit. For that, to determine the currents, we need to know some general laws regarding the voltages and currents in electric circuits. Let's start 
with the voltage rules. Well, we have three voltage rules. One of them is called the resistance rule. How do we calculate the voltage as you cross a resistor? And the second one is called the EMF rule. How do you calculate the voltage or potential difference as you cross an EMF, a battery? And the third one is called the loop rule. What will be the voltage or the potential difference as I traverse, as I go around a closed loop? So that's called the loop rule. If we know the, these three rules, then we know everything that we know to calculate the potential differences. Let's start with the resistance rule. The resistance rule says, if you pass through a resistor, suppose that I want to go around this loop this way. Now, if you pass through a resistor in the direction of the current, like we are doing here, okay, we are going, uh, what is that, clockwise? We are going clockwise. So if I go around the loop this way and come across the resistor, I will traverse the resistor in the direction of the current. The current is downward, and that's how I'm going to go through the resistor. If I traverse or cover or cross the resistor in the direction of the current, the potential difference across the resistor will be negative. If I go through the resistor opposite to the current, the potential difference will be positive. Why is that? You can see that here. This point of the resistor is connected to the positive terminal. This one is connected to the negative terminal. So, this will be at higher potential compared to this one. And therefore, if I go this way in the direction of the current, the potential will drop. It will go from high to low potential. And therefore, the potential difference will be negative. Now, we know the sign. How much is the potential difference across a resistor? That comes from Ohm's law, IR. Okay, if I know the current multiplied by the resistance, that is the potential difference across the resistor. Plus or minus will come from the direction like we explained. The second rule is called the EMF rule. How do you calculate or how do you determine the sign of the potential difference as you cross an EMF, a battery? Well, the, simple, the rule is very simple and very logical. If you go across a battery or an EMF in the direction of the arrow, the potential difference is positive because you are going from the lower to the higher potential. So definitely you have an increase and therefore the potential difference will be positive. If I go opposite to the EMF arrow, the potential difference will be negative because I'm going from the higher to the lower potential. How much is the potential difference? That's the value of the EMF of the battery. Now what about the whole loop? I have a loop that contains uh, resistors and batteries. How do I calculate the potential difference for the whole loop? Well, that's the loop rule. It says the algebraic, okay, some of them are positive, some negative, the algebraic sum of the changes in potential encountered in a complete traversal, okay, passing, in a complete traversal of any loop in a circle must be zero. And this rule is called Kirchhoff loop rule. It comes from the conservation of energy. It's like mechanical energy. If I have a block and raise it to five meters above its level and then take it three meters below and bring it back to the initial level, what is the change in the gravitational potential energy of the block? Zero, since the level didn't change. So here we are saying the same thing. If we start at a certain point, like point A, and go around the loop, come back to point A, the sum of the potential differences will be zero. In some, if I take a charge, some points the charge will gain potential energy, in other points it will lose potential energy, and if it comes to the initial point, the sum will be zero. There will be points where we have gain, some points where we will have loss, the total sum, the algebraic sum, will be zero, that's again, a consequence of the law of conservation of energy. So if we now apply these rules to this simple circuit, let me start at point A, go around the loop in a clockwise manner and come back to point A. What do I have? First, we will come across the battery, going in the direction of the current, so that's plus E. Then these wires have zero resistance, so there will be no potential difference. I come across the resistor, 
going in the direction of the current, so that will be minus. How much is the potential difference across the resistor? That's Ohm's law, I times R. And the loop rule says the sum of all of these must be equal to zero. So from here, I can find the value of the current passing through this single loop circuit, which will be equal to the EMF of the battery divided by the resistance. And this simple equation will become very important when we deal with electric circuits. As you will see, we will always try, if we can, we will not always be able, but if we can, we want to reduce any electric circuit to a single loop circuit like this one, add all the EMFs, add all the batteries algebraically to one single effective battery, and all, add all the resistors to one equivalent resistance, and then the current in the single loop circuit will be the effective EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. And that's how we will do it if we can. Sometimes, many times we cannot. And I will tell you when can we and when we cannot reduce it to a single loop circuit. So that is the first set of rules. Remember, again, let's have the big picture. We want to determine the currents passing in every branch of the circuit. For that, we need some rules that deal with the voltages, which are these, and some rules that deal with the currents, which are these. Current rules are very simple. We just have one current rule, which we already saw in chapter 26. It says, a junction like this one where uh, the current splits at the junction, the sum of entering currents is equal to the sum of leaving currents. So in this case, we say that I0 is equal to I1 plus I2. And this follows from the conservation of electric charge. The loop rule follows from conservation of energy. This follows from conservation of electric charge. And from now on, this is called Kirchhoff current rule. Okay, Kirchhoff, the first one was Kirchhoff loop or voltage rule. This is Kirchhoff current rule. Now, Kirchhoff, you uh, pronounce it in any way you like. Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff. Khrushchev, it depends on how do you pronounce uh, this name, depending on different regions of the world. I will call him Kershov, and I hope he doesn't get us very upset with me. The second point we have today is the combination of resistors. Remember in chapter 25, we saw how to combine capacitors in parallel and series. Here we want to do the same thing. I have a group of resistors connected in a certain manner, and I want to reduce them into a single equivalent resistance. So for that, we want to consider the combination of resistors in parallel and series. Here is the first combination, which is the series combination. The series combination is shown in the figure here. We have three resistors connected in series to a battery. <clears throat> resistors connected in such a way that they have only one common. Look at this one here. There is only one path between these two. There is only one path between these two. There is no junction between them. In that case, this is a series combination. So resistors connected in such a way that they have only one common point are said to be connected in series. So here is the real circuit, and that's the representation, a schematic representation of that, that three resistors are here, and that's the battery, only one path between any two resistors. In this case, what do we say? We say that the potential difference, the current, first of all the current, remember we have two things. In the case of capacitors, we dealt with charge and potential difference. We said what is the same, what will be different. Now in the case of resistors, we again have the potential difference, but instead of the charge, now we talk about the current. In this case, the current passing through each resistor is the same. Think of it as a flow of water through a tube. If this were a tube, the volume flow rate of water will be the same everywhere. So the current flowing through each resistor will be the same in the series combination. However, the potential difference will be different. Okay? Each one of them will have a different value of R. R is the same for all of them, but R may be different. So the potential difference across each, each resistor may be different. And in that case, 
we say that the potential difference of the battery is divided, distributed, divided among the three resistors. Now, like we did with capacitors, if I have a group of many resistors connected in series, what is their equivalent resistance? We went through the derivation in lecture 31 of chapter 27. You find that in YouTube. And going through the derivation, we saw that the equivalent resistance of resistors connected in series is simply the sum of the individual resistances. So if I have two resistors, let's keep that in mind. If I have two identical resistors connected in series, two identical resistors connected in series, what is their equivalent resistance? According to this one, it will be R plus R, which is 2R. So indeed, the resistance increases if we connect the resistors in series. The second combination is the parallel combination. Here is an example of a parallel combination of three resistors, okay? And that's the circuit representing this diagram here. You can see now that each one of the resistors is connected directly to the battery, not through another resistor. So that's the parallel combination. And therefore, like the capacitors, each resistor, since it is directly connected to the battery, each resistor will have the same potential difference across it, which is equal to the EMF of the battery. So in this case, the potential difference across all resistors will be the same, but the current will be different. The current will be produced by the battery. It will come to this junction, split into two currents, come to this second junction, again split into two currents, so the currents will be, or may be different, in all three uh, resistors. With this in mind, we again ask if I have many resistors connected in parallel, what is their equivalent combination? Well, the equivalent resistance of many resistors connected in parallel is the sum of the reciprocals, not the sum of the resistors, the sum of the reciprocals. So you add the reciprocals, and then at the end, don't forget to take the reciprocal again to find the equivalent resistance. So if I have two resistors, two identical resistors, connected in parallel. What is their parallel combination? It will be R times R over R plus R. Okay, one over R plus one over R will be like that. So that will be R squared over two R, which will be R over two. If you connect them in series, the effective resistance will be double. If you connect them in parallel, the effective resistance will be half, so the resistance decreases. With this now, we want to consider the next topic we have, which is how do we calculate the potential differences in an electric circuit? The idea here is we have a circuit like this one, and we want to uh, calculate the potential difference between two points, arbitrary points, in the circuit. It's not a resistor. It's not a battery. If it is a resistor or a battery, we know how to do it. What about if I have two arbitrary points in the circuit? How do I find the potential difference between them? Before we discuss that, let's consider the circuit here, a single loop circuit uh, consisting of a real battery, so it has its own internal resistance, and that is connected to an external resistor of resistance R. The battery will produce a current, and the current, like we studied in uh, chapter 26, conventionally it will go from the positive to the negative terminal. The question now is, let's say that we start at point A and traverse the circuit clockwise, go around the circuit clockwise, and come back to point A. How will the electric potential change as we go around the circuit, starting at A, and coming back to A. So, if you do the analysis, this is how it looks like. We simply took this loop and fold it back like a line. So here is point A, internal resistance of the battery, then the external resistor, and we come back to point A. So you just take this back here, and you get the circuit. We just fold it back like a rope to see the potential differences. Now what is happening here? 
Here is the potential at point A, whatever it is, okay? That's our reference. What will happen? We will first cross the battery from the negative to the positive terminal, so there will be an increase in potential, and that's the increase we have here. Then we come across the internal resistance of the battery going with the current, so there will be a drop in the potential, and that's the small drop in here due to the internal resistance of the battery, and the value of the potential difference by Ohm's law is I times R. Then we have nothing. These have zero resistance. We come to the external resistor, again going in the direction of the current, so there will be a drop in the potential, which is this drop in here, and its value is equal to IR. Then we come back to the same level that we started with, and that's how it was. So we will have increases, we will have decreases, the net change will be zero. So the question now is, if I have an electric circuit, not a single loop like this one, but a multi-loop, okay? Consider an electric circuit. Uh, given an electric circuit, we are usually interested in finding the potential difference between two points, any two points in the circuit. Here is a multi-loop circuit, and we want to find the potential difference between points A and B. How do we do that? Well, here is the procedure. The first step is to start at one point. You can either start at A or at B, and then look at the question. Is he asking for VB minus VA or VA minus VB? You can arrange that at the end. But where do you start? You can arbitrarily start at A or B. And then traverse, cross, go through the circuit to the other point. So let's say that I want to start at point A. I want to find the potential difference between A and B. So I will start at A and go to B. How many paths are there? Well, you can go through this way. This is a possible path. Here is another path, you go this way. A third path would be this way. Can you think of another one? Well, I can think of another one. We can go, if we like, this way. Okay? All paths are equivalent. They will give you the same amount of potential difference between points A and B. Which path of them do you follow? The most convenient, where you have known quantities. If you have a path with many unknowns, that will be a lot of work, okay, and maybe a waste of time. So you make the decision as what is the most convenient path out of these. And then as you do so, as you pick a path and go through it, add algebraically, positive or negative, add algebraically the potential differences, and then find out VA minus VB or VB minus VA as requested in the problem. Finally, let's remember uh, how do we calculate the power. That's something we said at the end of chapter 26. The rate of energy transfer, rate of energy is power, from an EMF device is given by I times E. Remember in chapter 26, we said P is equal to IV. Now V is the potential or EMF of the battery, so that's equal to IE. This is the power produced by or supplied by the EMF. Part of it will be dissipated as thermal energy and resistors. Part of it will be used to charge other lower batteries. So it depends on the circuit given. So this is about the uh, first section, section one, in which we really covered a lot of scattered ideas, brought them together, that will enable us to deal with multi-loop circuits. Now we are in a position to deal with the core of chapter 27, which is multi-loop circuits, and how do we analyze them. Let's consider, as an example, this multi-loop circuit. Okay, We have many currents, one, two, three, four currents passing here. So this is an example of a multi-loop circuit. To analyze such a circuit, we need two sets of rules. We need to determine the currents. To determine the currents, we need two sets of rules that we already discussed. The first one is the voltage rules which is what we discussed at the beginning, the three rules. And the second one is the junction rule. Okay, what happens at the junction, sum of entering is equal to sum of leaving currents. These are called Kirchhoff rules, and we will use them 
to analyze multi-loop circuits. We will use both of them. Okay, we need a lot of equations to deal with. So how if we are given a multi-loop circuit that we cannot reduce to a single loop circuit? Note that this is an easy one because we can combine these three in parallel to one equivalent resistance and therefore end up with a single loop. But sometimes if we cannot, how do we apply it? apply a shoe rules to analyze multi-loop circuits. Here is the procedure. You don't have to memorize these because once you start doing problems on Kershoff rules, this will become a habit and you will do it by default. It's like chapter 12 in uh, Physics 101. Remember that? Uh, problem tactics to analyze equilibrium problems. Draw the free body diagram, isolate the body, isolate the forces, find the torques and then find the unknowns. This is the same thing. We just go through the procedure, but once you start applying them, you don't have to memorize this procedure. The first step is to label the known and known quantities. This will be given in the problem. Assign directions to currents in each part of the circuit. So you say that, I will assume that the current here is going up, here it's going up, but here it's going down. Arbitrarily, don't worry. Just get any direction of the current, okay? Assign directions to the current in each part of the circuit. If you guess the direction of the current incorrectly, your result will be negative. So if you do the analysis and find that one or more currents are negative, it means that the direction that you selected is incorrect. But the value of the current, the magnitude, the value of the current is correct. It's just the direction you didn't pick correctly. You must adhere to the assigned direction, i.e. if you find that one of the currents is negative, do not change it in the middle of the problem. Keep working with it, but take it as negative, okay? You have to stick to the rules of the game until the end of the game. Once you do that, so you are given a circuit, assign directions in different branches of the circuit, and then apply the junction rule to as many junctions as you have in the problem. Once you apply the junction rule, the only thing left is the voltage rules for resistors, batteries, and loops. And to apply the voltage rules, you choose a loop and a starting point. You choose out of the many loops you have in the multi-loop circuit, pick up any one of them arbitrarily, according to your convenience, and start to traverse it from any point you like in the loop and in any direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. All of these are arbitrary. You choose any loop, start from any point in the loop, and choose any direction to traverse the loop. Okay? Apply, once you decide these, once you pick these, apply the voltage rules that we have studied to this particular loop, to the resistors, EMFs, and loops. So you have something coming, some equations coming from the junction rule, some equations coming from the voltage rules, solve the equations simultaneously for the unknowns in the problem. And we will see how this procedure goes when we start doing uh, examples. So these are the topics we have in the uh, first two sections. Now we are in a position to start our work with uh, exam questions on these topics. We will start with this problem here, which says, find the equivalent resistance. Okay, no currents, nothing. You are given a group of resistors, so let me have that handy rule here. In the series combination, uh, the uh, equivalent resistance is the sum, R1 plus R2, I'm assuming two. For the parallel combination, it is R1, R2, divided by R1 plus R2. This is very handy to solve problems in a quick manner. So with this, let's look at this problem, uh, which says, <clears throat> where is my resistor here? Where is the pin? Ah. The problem says, find the equivalent resistance across points A and B 
Okay, a cross pollen. Here is a group of resistors. What is the equivalent resistance between points A and B? I.e., what is the equivalent resistance of these resistors? So we start from the simplest point. To, to me, the simplest point is the end, where we have nothing beyond it, which is this part in here. Because once you come here, you have branches, you have junctions. Here you don't have anything. So I will start from here and move that way. What do I have? I have first three resistors connected in series. What is their equivalent resistance? The sum. Okay? 1 plus 1, 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So, I can remove all of these, replace them with one resistor. Let me do it here. Here is the equivalent resistance of these. 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 4. And then I have this one there. Okay? Which is 4 ohms. And then I have another one here, which is 1 ohm. Okay, and then I have another 1 ohm in here. And then I have 4 ohms, and then points A and B. So we combine these to give us 4. Okay, now I have two resistors connected in parallel. What is their equivalent? Resistance, they are identical, so it will be half of them. 4 times 4 over 4 plus 4 is 2. So I can replace these okay, with an equivalent resistance, which is equal to 2 ohms. Now what do I have? I have just like what we started with. I have these three resistors connected in series. What is the equivalent resistance? Add them. 1 plus 2. 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So I can replace all of them with one resistor, which is equal to 4 ohms. Okay? Remove all of these. And then, what do we have? We have two resistors connected in parallel. Their equivalent resistance is half of them because they are identical. So the equivalent resistance will be equal to 2 ohms. Okay? A very simple tracking of uh, resistors. Next, we have again a problem on the equivalent resistance. Here we are given a group of uh, resistors and the problem says in figure 6 find the equivalent resistance between points A and B. Well, let's do that. We first combine these three which are in parallel. If you don't see that, here is this one that may be confusing. What if I draw it this way? Does it make a difference? Not at all. Because this point is the same as this. And this point will be the same as this one here. So it goes like this. I have three resistors connected in parallel. What is their equivalent resistance? Now be careful. You add the reciprocals. And then add, take the reciprocal. So it will be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. Okay, take a common denominator, add, and that will be 6 over 12. So the equivalent resistance of these three is equal to 2 ohms. Then, I come to the lower branch. Here, what do I have? I have these two resistors, 10 ohms and 0. Okay, this is aware of 0 resistance. Connected in parallel. What is their equivalent resistance? Here it is, 10 times 0 over 10 plus 0, that will be 0. So we don't have anything in here. And therefore, finally, the circuit will be, I will start at point A. Here is point A. And what do I have? I have the resistor outside, which is 2 ohms. And then I come across these. We found that these add up to 2 ohms. So here is this one and then these will add up to zero so like nothing there okay there it is and then i have this extra resistor three ohms and then point b three ohms and then point b what is the equivalent resistance now we have three resistors connected in series add them two plus two is four 
4 plus 3 is 7, and that's the answer that we have in there. Next, we look at this one. This is a single loop circuit. Don't be confused with many batteries and resistors. It's a single loop circuit. So the way we will do it is we will reduce all the batteries into one and all the resistors into one because they are connected in series. The effective or equivalent resistance is the sum. Let's read the problem. It says in figure three, a battery with an EMF of 12 volts, that's one, 12 volts, and internal resistance one ohm, is used to charge a battery. This is a weaker battery, seven volts, so this is 12, this is seven. This will charge that one, and internal resistance of one ohm. The current in the circuit is, remember, in our analysis, we said that we always like to reduce any circuit into a single loop circuit containing one battery and one resistance. So here is an example of that. Let's reduce this to one, and one resistance. Here we have two resistances in series. What is their equivalent? The sum. Each one is one ohm, so one plus one is two. So this is the equivalent resistance. Then we look at the batteries. This will give us a current going that way. This will give us a current going that way. They are opposite to each other. It's like two vectors in opposite directions. What is the resultant? It's the difference between the two. The bigger minus the smaller. The bigger is with this one, 12. The smaller is this seven. 12 minus seven is equal to five. So we have an effective battery, and I'm taking the polarity as in here. Look at the polarity here. That's the polarity I have there, positive, negative, whose value is equal to the difference, which is equal to five volts. So what is the current? The current is the net EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. The net EMF is what we found here, five, and the equivalent resistance is two, so the current is 2.5 amperes, okay? And in this case, although the problem is not asking for it, the current will be uh, counterclockwise for this circuit. We next look at uh, this one here, which is uh, question 17 in the final exam of term uh, 183. Okay, here we have a multi-loop circuit, okay? We have many loops in here. We ask ourselves, can we reduce it to a single loop like we did in here? If we can, life will become easy. Sometimes we cannot. But let's see, this one, since we only have one battery, there is our resistors, we are, or we may be able to reduce this into a single loop uh, circuit. So let's read the problem and see what is requested and then decide. The problem says, <clears throat> for the circuit shown in figure seven, find the potential difference VA minus VB across the two ohm resistor. Well, the question is very simple. You have a resistor, find the potential across this resistor. That's Ohm's law. What does Ohm law say? Ohm's law says the potential difference across a resistor is equal to the current passing through it multiplied by its resistance. The resistance is two ohms. So what we need is to find the current passing through this resistor, like we did in the previous problem. We will reduce this to a single loop and then find the current. So let's combine the resistors. We have two resistors connected in parallel. How much is their equivalent resistance? Six times 12, 72 over 18, that will be four. 4 plus 4 is 8. These are in series. 4 plus 4 is 8. Then I have 8 and 8 in parallel. What would they give me? 4. 4, and then here we have 2 in series, will be 6. So the problem becomes basically as follows. This is question 17 in the final of term 183. I can reduce it now to a single loop circuit. Here is the EMF, the battery. 
And we have seen that the EMF, the equivalent resistance is how much? That will be 4 plus 4, 8, with this 8 would be 4, and 2 is 6. So the equivalent resistance is 6 ohms. The current will be in this direction. So uh, the current is equal to the EMF, which is 24, divided by 6, and that will be 4 amperes. This is the current provided by the battery, coming out of the battery. And that's the current going through the requested resistor. If it comes to this point, it will split. And we will have other values in here. But fortunately, he's asking for the current through this, which is the same as the current coming out of the battery. So how much is the potential difference between points A and B? According to Ohm's law, this is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. The current is 4, and the value of that resistance is equal to 2. So the potential difference will be 8 volts. 24 is provided by the battery. 8 out of the 24 will appear in here. And the remaining, how much is the remaining? 16 volts will appear in the various branches of the circuit. Okay, the next problem we have is uh, this one. Now, this is a single loop. Okay, good. So we can combine the batteries and combine the resistors like we did before. Let's see what do we have. The problem says in the circuit, uh, in the circuit, uh, shown in figure 5, a current of 0.25 amperes is flowing through the resistor R. So we are given the current. Usually we do our homework to calculate the current. The current is already given to us, and that's the current flowing through resistor R. Well, since this is a single loop circuit, everything is in series, so that current will be flowing in every other resistor. What is the power dissipated in resistor R? Now, we have a resistor, and we want to find the power dissipated in the resistor. As we studied in uh, chapter 26, the power dissipated in a resistor is equal to I squared multiplied by R. Well, I is given, 0.25. How much is R? R itself is unknown. So we want to find how much is R itself. And for that, we will uh, write the equation for the, the current flowing in this single loop circuit, and then use the current to find the unknown resistance. It's like the previous problems. This is a single loop circuit. So the current in a single loop circuit is the net EMF divided by the net or equivalent resistance since all of them are in series. What is that equal to? Whatever it is, we, we, we want to find our equivalent is the net EMF divided by the current. So, uh, this is equal to, I may need my calculator to be handy. Uh, how much is the net? It's the bigger minus the smaller. The current, of course, will go with the bigger. So, the current will be, uh, the current will be counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. The net EMF is 12 minus 6. الآن واحد يسأل ليش نجمعهم ما نطرح أو نطرحهم ما نجمعهم. Look at the polarities. Okay. Look at the polarities. This will give us a current this way. This will give us a current this way. So they are opposite to each other, and we have to subtract. Bigger minus the smaller. 12 minus 6 is 6. And the current, we are told, is equal to 0.25. So this is like 1 fourth. 6 times 4 is equal to 24 ohms. Now, what is that equal to? This is a series combination of resistors, so it will be 6 plus 12 plus R. 6 plus 12 plus R is equal to 24, and therefore the unknown resistance is equal to, this is 18, 24 minus 18 is equal to 6 ohms. Now I know what is the resistance, so the power dissipated in resistance R is equal to I squared over uh, I squared multiplied by R. I is equal to 0.25, which is one fourth, 
and then I squared it, so 1 over 16 multiplied by 6, this is basically 3 over 8, which is 0.375 watts, and you round it off to 0.38 watts. Okay? Again, we have a single loop circuit in here. Next, we have this multi-loop circuit. In principle, maybe we don't have to, but in principle, can we reduce it to a single loop circuit? Yes, you can combine these two with the rest, and you end up with a single loop set. Let's see what he is looking for. The problem says in figure <clears throat> in figure six, if the battery shown is an ideal electromotive force of 18 volts, then calculate the power delivered to resistor R2, which is equal to three ohms in the circuit. Okay? We want to find how much power is delivered to this one. Here is the equation for the power delivered or dissipated in a resistor. We know how much is the resistance, 3 ohms. But we have to find the current passing through this resistor. Now, it is a little bit twisted because he is not asking for this one. If it were, that would be easy. He is asking for this one. So we will calculate the current coming out of the battery, which will come to this junction here and split into two currents. So we want to find how much current will be there. Okay, so what I will do is I will first reduce this into a single loop circuit. Okay, what, what do we have? We have these two in parallel. They will combine as 1 times 3 over 1 plus 3, 3 over 4. These two will combine to 0.75. Then I have something like this. This is question 13. Question 13 in the final exam of 10173. My circuit will be like this. Here is the EMF, which is equal to 18 volts. Then I have the 2 ohms, and I have another one down there, 4 ohms, and then I combined these two into 1, 3 times 1 over 3.1 uh, plus 1 would be 0 0.75, 0 0.75 ohms, which I can now combine to one resistor. These three are connected in series. So what do I have? This will look like this. Here is the EMF, and then I have a single equivalent resistance, which is the series combination of these. 2 plus 4 is 6, 6.75. 6 6.75 ohms, and I have some current, let me call it IB, coming out of the battery. How much is IB? Exactly like we have here. The net EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. Now I have one EMF, which is equal to 18 volts, divided by the equivalent resistance of all of these. I found it to be 6.75. So the current coming out of the battery, let me calculate it. The current coming out of the battery uh, is equal to 18 over 6.75. That will be 2.67 amperes. This is the current coming out of the battery. Which current I'm, I'm looking for? I'm looking for the current going through here. Okay, so now let me draw back the circuit. Go from here back to the original circuit that I started with. And the situation will be as follows. I will draw the same circuit as given in there. So here I have the EMF. This is one branch here, okay? So I can add up these resistors, they are in series. Two plus four is six, so I can say that I have a six ohm resistor, which is the sum of these two. Then I have this one, which is the resistor I'm looking for, three ohm. And then I have the last one, 
when called in pair. Okay? Remember, I want the current here. So, what do we have now? We have a current IB, that's what we calculated here, coming out of the battery. Here is IB. IB will come to this junction and be split into two currents. Let's call this one I1 and let's call this I2. Which of the two I'm looking for? I'm looking for I1. So here comes your imagination. This is the unknown. Pick up a loop that will produce this unknown. You, you are free to pick any loop, but you should be smart to choose the correct or, smart, or the quickest one. Well, I think you agree with me that the loop we need to consider is this one here. Okay? Why? Because here I know what is the current, that is this one, and here is the unknown current that I'm looking for. So I will take this, the left loop, as my loop, I will start at this point here, here is the starting point, and go around the loop in, in what? In a clockwise direction. I could have started at any other point, I could go counterclockwise. All of these are arbitrary. Now if I do that, let me start at this, go around the loop and add the potential differences. What do I have? I will first come across the EMF, going from the negative to the positive, so that's E. And then I go through this resistor in the direction of the current, okay? Here is my traversal in the direction of the current, so that will be minus, how much is it? I, R. I is what we calculated here, 2.67, and R is equal to 6 ohms. Then I come across this resistor, again going in the direction of the current, so that will be minus I, R. R is equal to 3, I, I'm calling it I1. So it will be 3, I1, and then I come back to the original point, the sum of all of these is equal to 0. So I1, the current I'm looking for, is equal to how much? The EMF of the battery. The EMF of the battery is equal to 18, so 18 minus 2.67, or let me say, the answer times 6, nice, and then 18 minus this, and then I divide it by 3, so that will be 0 0.67, 0 0.67 amperes. That's the current passing here. Now, how much power is dissipated there? The power dissipated in the 3 ohm resistor is I1 squared multiplied by that R, I1 is 0.67 squared multiplied by that resistance, which is R. So let me square this answer and multiply it by 3. That will be 1.33 watts. And that's the power dissipated there. Okay? Although we reduced it to a single loop circuit, we still had a lot of work to do to go back to the multi-loop circuit. Next, we look at this problem, and these are exam problems, okay? So you have to learn the tricks that we play to deal with these uh, questions. The problem here says, for the circuit given in figure five, which is this circuit here, if the current through one of the six ohm, how many six ohms do we have? We have one here, uh, and we have one here. If the current through one of the six ohms, we have two of them. Which of the two? two this one. Because that is shown on the figure. You, you do not have to make any guess. The current through this six ohm resistor is equal to half an ampere. Find the current through the four ohm resistor. So given the current here, what will be the current here? Well, you can make this problem very complicated. Or very simple. As I said, arbitrary choice. Remember this point. Arbitrary choice. You can choose any loop. As long as it is closed, we don't care about its shape. So the loop I will be looking at is this triangle here. That's all I need. Is it a closed loop? 
Yes, this is a closed loop. Do I know the current here? Yes, half an ampere. Do I know the current here? No, that's what I want to find. So there we go. That's the loop I will choose, which is this triangle in here. So that's my loop. Where do I start? At any point. I will start at this point and go this way. You can go that way. Totally arbitrary. So if we do that, let's see what do we have. This is uh, problem 15, question 15, in the final exam of term 171. So if I start at that point and go this way until I come back to it, what do I have? I have first, I'm going through this resistor. I will assume the current, assume that the current is going this way. If my assumption is correct, the answer I will get is positive. Otherwise, it will be negative. So I assume that there is a current going that way. And that's the way I'm going. So let, let me isolate it to see what I'm, what I'm saying here. Here is the loop I am considering. OK? And then I have this second resistor that goes this way. So six ohms with a current of half an ampere. And here I have six volts. The EMF is six volts. And I'm assuming that there is a current here going that way. This is the one that I'm looking for. And this is four ohms. Now don't tell me that this current is the same as this one, because there is a junction here, OK? And any junction, you have splitting of currents. The current will not be the same, as well as this junction here. So the current will not be the same because of these junctions. I will start, like I said, at this point and go around the loop in this way. So what do I have? I first come across this resistor in the direction of the current. So that is minus 4i, ir. Ohm's law minus 4i. Then I go through the battery in the direction of the EMF from the negative to the positive. So that will be plus 6. Then I come here. The current, as shown in the figure, is in that direction. But I'm going in this direction. See? The current is this way. That's given in the circuit. How I am going? That way, opposite to the current. So that will be a positive change plus, and how much is it? I, R, 0. 0.5 times 6. 0. 0.5 times 6, the sum of all of these, I'm coming back to the starting point, is 0. So take this to the other side, 4I is equal to, how much is this? 0. 0.5 times 6 is 3, 3 plus 6 uh, is 9, and therefore the current is 9 over 4, which is 2.25 appears exactly as we have in here. Okay, next we look at this problem here. We are given a group of resistors connected this way, and the problem says, if the current through the 150 <coughs> ohm resistor is 1 ampere, we have many branches of here, uh, uh, branches in here. There is a current here, a different current here, a different current here, and a different current here, and a different current there. We are just given one of the currents, which is the current here, through this resistor, it's equal to 1 ohm, uh, 1 ampere. If that is the case, find the current through the 51 ohm resistor. Find the current here, OK? So <clears throat> that's what we want. We want to find the current passing through that if we are given the current passing through there. So let's go through the circuit. It's, it's very helpful, very instructive to do quick steps in which you don't do any calculations based on what you have. OK? Here's the story. We have some current coming this way. Whatever it is, whatever it is, we have a current coming this way. 
it will come to this junction and split into two parts. One going there, the other one going there. Let's look at the values of the resistances. Okay? Remember that these two resistors are connected in parallel. So they have the same potential difference. Okay, potential difference is IR. So 1 times 150 is equal to something times 75. What is that something? It's 2. Okay, 2 times 75 is equal to 150. And therefore, the current here is 2 amperes. I did that conceptually. Now we have these two currents, 1 ohm from there, 1 ampere from there, and 2 amperes from there. They will combine at this junction here to give me what? To give me a current of 3 amperes going here, going in this branch, up to this point here. Okay. Remember what we want? We want to find the current here. So now, pick up, that's the current that we are looking for, pick up a loop. You can choose any loop that you like that will give you this unknown. And here you pick the smart choice. Here is the loop that I will follow. Okay, I am free. I could do it that way or take any other path to, to, to form a closed loop. Now, go through this closed loop, apply Kirchhoff voltage rules. If I start at a uh, point, which point? Where did he start? If I start at point A, okay, and go through this loop and come back to A, what do I have? I will first come across this resistor going in the direction of the current. I'm going this way. And that's the current. Look at the arrow here. Okay, look at the arrow. Okay, that's the current. And that's how I am going around the loop. So, I will first have this potential difference. It's negative, going with the current. I R 150 times 1. Then, I come through these two. Okay? I have two resistors, the same current passing through them, and I'm going through them in the direction of the current, so that is minus the sum of the two resistors, 33 plus 6 to 1, times the current passing through them, which is 3 amperes. And then, continue. Nothing there. I come across this resistor, going in the direction of the current, so that's minus 5, uh, minus. I, R, I is what I'm looking for. R is equal to 51 ohms. The sum of all of these coming back to point A is equal to 0. Now solve for the unknown. The unknown is Ix. And if you do so, this is a simple equation, you would find the answer to be 8.47. So we really did some preliminary homework, conceptual homework, to simplify the circuit. And then we applied uh, voltage Kirchhoff rule. Next, let's look at this problem here. Now, here is a problem where I cannot reduce it to a single loop. Why? Because of the presence of many batteries. Many batteries in different branches. Low current had a battery here, I combine it like we did before. But now I have batteries in different branches, we cannot combine them. Okay? So this is an example where you have to stick to it as a multi-loop circuit, you cannot reduce it to a single loop. The problem says two identical, uh, two ideal batteries, ideal but not identical. Ideal batteries, ideal means maternal resistance is zero. Two ideal batteries are connected across a set of resistors, as shown in figure, C, uh, figure six. If the current I, if the current I, is half an ampere. Where is I? There. If the current I is equal to half an ampere, at what rate, that's the power, at what rate is the battery of EMF 15 providing energy to the circuit short? Hmm. Well, the rate of energy produced by a battery, okay, P, the power produced by a battery, is equal to I times the EMF of the battery. Now he is asking about this battery, the 15 volt. So I know EMF. What is the current produced by this battery? 
Okay, we want to find the, the current flowing in this branch here. How do we do that? You can, of course, analyze it as multi loop circuits or just be smart. All I have to do is just take this loop in here because I know what is the current here. That's given in the problem. And the current here is what I'm looking for. So don't analyze many loops. That's the only loop you are looking for. And therefore, having this in mind, the problem becomes as follows. This is uh, problem 15. Problem 15 in the final exam of term 172. So taking the right loop, I mean this one here. Start at A. Start at point A and move clockwise, okay, clockwise, this way. What do I have? In all of this branch, the current is half an ampere. So first I come across this resistor, the current is going that way, and that's how I'm going clockwise, so minus 10 times 0.5, minus 10 times 0.5. Then, I come across this one again, the current is going that way, that's how I'm traversing it, so minus, the resistance is 10 ohms, and the current is 0.5, continue, now I come to the EMF, going from the negative to the positive, so that's an increase, that's a positive change, and how much is the EMF, let's put it directly, 15. And finally, I come across this one. The current, as shown in the, the figure, you are given the direction of the current, so stick to it. The current is downward, I'm going upward, so that will be plus the current, whatever it is, multiplied by the resistance, which is 10. So I will call this 10 times the current coming out of this battery in here. The sum of all of that is equal to zero. So uh, I have 5, 5, 10, minus 10, plus 15 is plus 5. Okay, so the uh, current of the battery is equal to, I will take it to the other side, this will be minus 5 over 10, which is minus 0.5 amperes. What is the meaning of the negative sign? It means that the direction of the current shown here is incorrect. It should be upward. This is just for my knowledge. It will not affect anything. Now, what, at what rate uh, the, the energy is produced by the battery, P of the battery, is equal to I of the battery multiplied by the EMF. I is equal to half an ampere. There it is. And the EMF of the battery is 15 volts. So this is 7.5 watts. And that's the power produced or provided by this battery in here. Next, we look at this problem here. In principle, in principle, we can reduce this to a single loop if we like, because we only have one battery. But let's read uh, the problem and see what is requested in here. The problem here says the following. Okay, let me remove these so we have space. The problem says an ideal battery of EMF E in the, uh, in, is connected in the circuit as shown in the figure. If the current through the 10 ohm resistor, where is that one? The 10 ohm resistor. If the current there is 1 ampere, find the EMF of the battery. Find the EMF of the battery. So this is really going back, okay? And what makes it difficult is that there is no relation between these two. يعني ما واحدة نص الثانية أو دبلها. فمن نقدر ندبل أو 
minus factor and they are arbitrary, okay? So that makes it a little bit, some calculations in there that we have uh, to go there. So, <clears throat> uh, the current here, well, I think they are behaving nicely because this is half of that, okay? And they are in parallel. So if this is one ampere, this should be two amperes, okay? Because this is half resistance. So 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 1 is 10. We have 2 amperes. Okay, 2 and 1, that means the current coming here is equal to 3 amperes. What do we want? We want to find the EMF of the battery, so we have to find how much is the current here. We agreed that the current coming here is equal to 3 amperes. Uh, is that enough? No, because in this branch we have two unknowns. The current here and the EMF. So what is going on in here? Well, here we have uh, 60 ohms. What is this one here? 10 times 5 is 50 over 15. And these two are in parallel, then connected in series to that one. So let's go through it one by one. <coughs> uh, what we will do... I don't know if I highlighted that, no. Um, I will take the loop containing the 230 ohms, which is this one. I will take the current there to be uh, Ix, and I will take them along with the 10 ohms. Okay? Do you see what I'm doing? I will take this as my loop. To do what? to find the current here. إحنا إلى هنا اتفقنا. 3 amperes. 1 plus 2 is 3. What is the current there? To do that, let's take a loop containing these two. So I will draw this loop in here. Less, because I know what is the current here. Okay, let me isolate it. So this is what I have. 60 amperes, which is the sum of the two. Let me say that the current passing there, I will call it Ix. This is what I want to find. And then let me continue. Okay, I have this that goes this way. And finally, this way. This is the 10 ohm. And the current going through here is equal to 1 ampere, given in the problem. Okay, this is my loop. Okay, there's the loop, single loop. So, let's start at this point here, and go around this loop in a clockwise manner. What do I have? I will have the following. Starting at this point, I will first come across this resistor going in the direction of the current minus 60 Ix, Ir. Then I come across this resistor going opposite to the current. I'm going up, but the current is down. So that would be plus 1 times 10 is equal to 10 is equal to 0. So Ix is equal to 10 over 60, which is 1 over 6 of an ampere. Okay, now I think we are in business. Let me show you what we have here. Okay, so I will draw the 5 amperes. I will not draw the whole circuit. Here is the 5 ampere. Then we have this junction. At this junction, we will have two splitting. The current going through here is the current Ix, which is equal to 1 over 6 ampere. The current going through this, we agree that, it is 3 amperes. One here and two in here, they will combine to give us 3 amperes. So, what is the value of the current coming out of the battery? Okay, this is the current coming out of the battery. There it is. It will come and split as I showed in here. So, the current coming out of the battery is equal to sum of entering currents is equal to the sum of leaving currents which will be 3 plus 1 over 6, 
that will be 18 plus 1, 19 over 6 of an ampere. This is the current coming out of the battery. Now, after doing all of this, I will reduce it to a single loop circuit. So what do I have? If I have a single loop circuit, it will be the EMF of the battery, some current IB coming out of the battery, which is what I found here, and then the equivalent resistance of all of these resistors, of all of these. Can I find them? Well, these will add up to 60, and these will be 10 times 5 over 10 plus 5. 10 times 5 over 10 plus 5. That is 50 over 15. Divide by 5, that will be 10 over 3. Okay? So that's the value of the equivalent resistance of these. That will add up to the series combination of these, which is 60. So I have 60 times 10 over 3 over 60 plus 10 over 3. Okay, and that will be the equivalent resistance of these. I can just write it in here. And let me take simply, okay, to simplify. 10 over 3 is 3.33. So 60, uh, 10 over 3 times 60 is 200. This is 200. And then I have 60 plus 10 over 3. And then 200 over that, 200 over that will give me 3. 1, 6 amperes. And then, that's all of that. Then add it to 5. So the equivalent resistance is 5 plus all of this, and that will be 8.16 of an ohm. Now, I consider the single loop circuit. The current IB is equal to the net EMF. I just have one EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. <coughs> Therefore, the requested EMF is IB times R equivalent, which is equal to 19 over 6 times 8.16. Let's see. Times 19 over 6, and that will be 25.83 volts, round it off, and it will be 26. This is really a twisted problem. It's very lengthy, and you have many, many steps to uh, come up to this answer here. Some of it are hand waving, some of it are calculations, and that's how it goes. The last problem we have today is this one. The next problem is this. It says, in figure 8, all the batteries, how many? We have two in different branches. We can't reduce it to a single loop circuit. All the batteries are ideal. Find the current through the 6 ohm resistor. Find the current going through there. And we are given the current here. We are given the current here, which is the current in all of this. As long as we don't have branches or junctions, it will be the current through all of that. What do we want? We want to find the current here. I think it is very easy to see. Just take the outer loop as your loop. The only unknown there is the current here. Everything else is known. Don't take this one. So if I take the outer loop, in this case, what do I have? <clears throat> so this is... 17. Final exam, R172. Take the outer big loop, okay? Uh, start at this point, just below the battery, and go clockwise. What do I have? I will first come across the battery from the negative to the positive, that is plus 8. And then 
I come across this resistor going in the direction of the current, the current is that way, and that's how I am going. So I times R will be minus 1.0 times 1.64. And then I come across this resistor, uh, sorry, battery, going from the negative to the positive, that's positive change. So plus 4. And then I go through this resistor in the direction of the current. Here is the current minus uh, IR, so it will be 3.0 times 1.64. Continue. I go around this one, going in the direction of the current. I'm assuming the current is downward, okay? Fortunately, there are no signs or directions. So assume it any way you like. I'll assume it to be downward, that's the direction of travel, so it will be minus. And then what do we have? I <coughs> that I'm looking for multiplied by the resistance, which is 6. So this will be 8 plus 4 is 12, minus 1.1 uh, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 times 1.64 is equal to 6ix, okay? Now, just plug in the numbers. So what do you have? You have 4 times 1.64, and then you subtract that from 12, and then divide it by 6. That will be 0.91 amperes as we have it in here. This problem we will consider here is this one. This is a multi-loop circuit, and remember, uh, from the previous discussion and we will see that today if you are given a multi-loop circuit There are two things that we usually start with if we can do them They will ease our analysis. The first one is can I reduce a multi-loop circuit to a single loop circuit? In this case we cannot because we have branches I mean loops and every one of them has its own EMF so we cannot reduce it to a single loop circuit number two look for any loop, any loop in the multi-loop circuit that will do the job that you are looking for. And the choice of a loop in a multi-loop circuit is totally arbitrary. So you may choose a very strange loop as long as it does the job and give you what you are looking for. That's all what we are looking for. So here we have a multi-loop circuit. We have batteries in every loop, so we cannot reduce it to a multi uh, single loop circuit and we have to deal with it as a multi-loop circuit. Let's see what it says. It says, in the figure of circuit, uh, in the circuit of figure seven, the current I1, which is the current through this one, is equal to four amperes. Find the value of the current I3, which is the current in this branch here. Well, uh, Let's see if we can do that easily. Current I3, let's see. Uh, what we can do is take this loop, okay? We know the current in this one. We can find the current in this one, okay? And then we may apply the junction rule to this point here and uh, just add the currents to give us this one. Let's see if it is as easy as I'm looking at here. So. What we have here is we will consider the right loop, okay? The only unknown in this loop is the current I2. So let's do that. This is question 16 in the final exam of term 173. If I take the right loop, let's see what do we have. I will start at this point and go around this loop in a clockwise manner. So what do I have? First, I come across the EMF. I'm going from the negative to the positive. So that's a positive potential difference. And it's equal to 12. Then uh, I come across this resistor. I'm going in the direction of the current. So that's a negative change. And how much is it? Remember that the potential difference across the resistor is I times R. I is equal to 4 amperes. And R is 6, so IR will be 24. Minus 24 is equal to, now let's see what do we have. We go here, 
I'm going up, which is opposite to the direction of the current. If I am given the directions of currents on the circuit, I have to stick to what is given in the circuit. So I am going up, I'm going clockwise. So at this point, I'm going up, but the current is down. These two are opposite. So the potential difference here is positive. Positive. And how much is it? It's IR. Three times I2. Three times I2. And now apply Kirchhoff's voltage rule. The sum of the potential differences across a closed loop is equal to zero. So the sum of these potential differences is equal to zero. I will leave the three I2 here. Uh, subtract these two and take the rest there. So 12 minus 24 is minus 12. Take it there. That will be 12. So I2 is equal to 12 over 3, which is equal to 4 amperes. And now let's come to this junction here. Okay, let's draw this junction. Here is the junction. Okay, that is this junction here. And I will have this situation. I have a current I coming to this junction, which is what he is looking for, I3. And then what do we have? We have the current I2 going away from the junction. That is I2. And I have the current all over here. I have the current I1 going that way. So that is the current I1. Now apply the junction rule. The junction rule says the sum of entering currents is equal to the sum of leaving currents. What is entering here is I3. So I3 is equal to the sum of leaving currents, which will be I1 plus I2. Now let me put the numbers. I1 is given in the problem, which is equal to 4. I2 is what we found here, that is 4. So the sum is equal to 8 amperes. And that's the answer we have here, okay? Next, let us consider this problem here, which says, in the circuit shown in figure three, this one, the power dissipated in resistor R1, the power dissipated here, what is the power dissipated in a resistor? The power dissipated in a resistor is I squared times R. So the power dissipated in this resistor is equal to 20 watts. Find the resistors R1 and R2 respectively. What is R1 and what is R2? Well, if I have this equation, okay, if I have this equation, the power dissipated in a resistor is equal to the square of the current passing through it multiplied by the value of the resistance. Now, in this case, I am told that the power dissipated here is equal to 20 watts. Okay, let's see. 20 is equal to, do I know the current? Well, the current is shown in the figure that is equal to 2 amperes. So square of that is 4 times R. And therefore, R is equal to 20 over 4, which is 5 ohms. So I found R1. R1 is equal to 5 ohms, which is this one. Is there any other answer with 5 ohms? No. I am done, okay? I don't have to take the next step to find R2 because that's the only answer with R1 equal to R2. So this is really a test of how quick you can respond to the problem. If you can realize that, that's all you do and that's the solution. If you want to take it another step to find R2, for example, let's say that the problem was find R2, then how do we uh, find it? Remember that these two resistors are connected in parallel. If they are connected in parallel, then they have the same potential difference. And therefore, the potential difference across this one is the same as the potential difference across these two. Now, can I find out how much is that? Uh, well, I can find out the potential... Uh, I can find out what? The potential difference here, but I don't know the current. So you have to take another step to find what is the current here and therefore find that. How do you do that? Well, this is a place where you can reduce. I'm just giving you a hint. If you want to complete the problem, otherwise 
the problem is solved there. But if you want to see, reduce this one to a single resistor. They are connected in, in, uh, in parallel. And then you have the current here, but we don't have the EMF. How do you find the EMF? You have to take the outer loop because we know the current there and the resistance. So you can find what is the EMF. If I know the EMF and I know the current coming out of it, I can find the equivalent resistance. If I know the equivalent resistance, I can find what is the unknown resistance because already this is five, this is 10, this will be the unknown. So you can see that it becomes quite lengthy with many steps. If you realize that this is the only answer with R1 equal to five, that's all you have to do here. Okay. Let's move on, and let's now look at this problem. <clears throat> Which says, figure six shows a circuit. This is a multi-loop circuit. We cannot reduce it to a single loop because we have batteries in different branches. Compare this to this one, where we only have one battery, so we reduce all of that into one resistor. We cannot do that here because we have batteries or EMS in different branches. So figure six shows a circuit where the current in the two ohm, the current here, in this resistor is equal to three amperes. Find the unknown EMF. Find the unknown EMF. Well, how do we do that? To find the unknown EMF, you must consider either this loop or the outer loop. You have to consider a loop that has this unknown EMF. Whichever of the two you select, you have to know what is the current in this one. So we have to find the current there. How do we do that? Well, we will first take the lift loop. Okay? What do we have in the lift loop? I know the current there. That's three amperes. So I can find what is the current there. And just to be able to keep track of the currents, we have three currents. So let me redraw the circuit here as follows. Here is the 9 volt battery. Okay, that is this one. And then I will have a current here. I will call it I3 because it is passing through the 3 ohm. So here is the 3 ohm resistor. And then I have the junction here. And then I have this resistor, its value is 2 ohms, so I will call this I2, passing in the 2 ohms. And then I have a current here, I will call it I4.5, passing through this. I4.5, passing through the 4.5 ohm resistor, and then I have the unknown EMF that I'm looking for. Okay, and here is the rest of the circuit. So what I will do here is I will first take the lift loop. Let's say that we start at this point, go around the loop in a clockwise direction. So what do we have? This is question 16. In the final exam of term 183. Starting at this point, we first come across this battery going from the negative to the positive. So that is plus 9. And then I go across this resistor in the direction of the current, so that is minus 3 IR, 3 times I3. And then I go through this resistor in the direction of the current, IR, so that will be minus, how much is I2? I2 is equal to 3 amperes, multiplied by the 2 IR, 3 times 2 is 6. And then I come back to the starting point, the sum of all of these is equal to zero. So, take this one to the other side, nine minus six is three, is equal to three I three, and therefore I three is equal to one ampere, and it is positive, so the direction that I took here is correct. Now, let's come to the junction. The junction says the sum of entering currents, which is I three, is equal to the sum of leaving currents, which is I2, I2 is 3 amperes, let me write it symbolically first, 
which will be I2 plus I2 plus I4.5. So the current I'm looking for, I4.5, is equal to I3 minus I2. I3 is equal to 1 ampere minus I2 is equal to 3 amperes, 3 amperes. So that will be equal to minus 2 amperes, meaning that the direction that I took here is incorrect. Okay? There is a current coming out of the battery. The battery is there. Coming out of the battery in that direction. Okay? So just the negative sign tells me that the direction I have here is incorrect. What about I2? I2 is positive, so that's it. Now, I will take the right loop, start at this point, but I will change the direction of this because of the negative sign here. So just keep that in mind. This will go in this direction. So let's now take this loop, go around it in this direction. Starting at this point, we first come across the unknown EMF from the positive, from the negative to the positive. So that is now the right loop. It will be plus E, the unknown. And then I go through this resistor in the direction of the current. So that is minus 4.5 times, how much is I 4.5? It's equal to 2, okay? We took care of the negative here. And then I come across this one going in the direction of the current, so that is negative, and it will be 2 times I2, I2 is equal to 3 amperes. Then I come back to the original point, the sum of all of these is equal to 6. So let me keep the unknown EMF here, take all of these to the other side, uh, 2 times 4.5 is 9, plus 6, and that will be 15 volts as we have it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. And now we look at this circuit here. Before I read the problem, since we only have one EMF, I can, in principle, if I need, if I need, I can reduce all of this into a single loop circuit. Just add these resistors in parallel in series and reduce them into one resistance, if I need to. But first, let's read the problem and see what do we have to do here. The problem says, in a circuit, in the circuit shown in figure 4, if the potential at point A is 0, if the potential at this point is equal to 0, Find the potential at point B. Find the potential at point B. Okay. Well, to find the potential, at, remember, how do you find the potential differences between two points? You start at one point, proceed to the other point through any path you are looking for. So to go from A to B, how many paths do we have? We can either go this way, we can go this way, or we can go this way. So here is my strategy. I will reduce this circuit into a single loop circuit, add the resistors, reduce it into, into a single loop circuit consisting of the EMF and the equivalent resistance. What do I get out of that? I get the, the current that is coming out of the battery, which will be the current flowing in this branch. If I know the current passing here, then I can find the potential difference between points A and B. So that is how we will proceed. First, let's reduce this into a single loop circuit. So this is uh, question 14 in the final exam of term 171. We first combine these two resistors. They are in parallel. The parallel combination is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. So I would just call them by the numbers 1 and 3. R13, which is the parallel combination of the 1 ohm and 3 ohms, 
is 1 times 3 over 1 plus 3, which is 3 over 4, which is 0.75 ohms. Then I have something like this. I have the 2 ohms, which is there, and these two combine into one resistor, which is 0.75 ohms. That's what we found here. And then I have the remaining resistor of resistance, 4 ohms. Now, these three are connected in series. So the equivalent resistance is the sum. It will be 2 plus 0.75 plus 4, and that will be 6.75 ohms. So the problem simply becomes a single loop circuit going like this. Here is the EMF, which is the 18 volts, connected to an equivalent resistor whose value is equal to that. There is a current I, B, coming out of the battery. So I call it I, B. What is I, B? Like we saw in many problems in the previous problem, uh, previous lecture, it's E net divided by R equivalent. We just now have one EMF, which is equal to 18. R equivalent is 6.75. So, <coughs> If I uh, divide these two, what do I get? This is 14, huh? This is 14. 14 in the final of 171. Uh, so I of the battery is 2.67 amperes, which is the current coming out of the battery, which is the current throughout this branch in here. Now, let's apply the procedure to find the potential difference between two points, in this case, A and B. We start at one point, which is A. Go to B through any path. Now, I will take this path because I know what is the current in that path. So, I will go from A to B like this. So, we start at point A, VA, and then add the potential differences as you go along. I will go through this resistor. The current is that way. I am going this way. So I am going opposite to the current and therefore this is a positive potential difference. Plus, how much is it? It's two times the current here, which is 2.67, 2.67. And then, continue. I come across the battery going from the positive to the negative, that will be a negative change, and that is minus 18. Then, continue, I go across this resistor this way, which is opposite to the current, the current is going that way, I am going this way, so this again is a positive potential difference, how much is it? It's 4 times the current, which is 2 point, 4 times 2 point, 67, that will bring me to the second point, which is B, so that the sum of all of these is equal to VB. That's what he is looking for, the potential at point B. Now, the potential at A, we are told in the problem that is equal to zero. The potential at A is equal to zero. And then I have, uh, what? What's that? That's two times, sorry. This is 2 times 2.67. 2 times 2.67. So this is uh, 6, right? 6 times 2.67 minus 18. And if you multiply this, you will get the answer as minus 2. Note that there is plus 2 there. So if you don't do the procedure correctly and get the negative answer, the negative of the correct answer, you will have it there. So you have to be very careful with the signs and how do you traverse the paths from one point to the next one. Let us next look at this problem. It looks scary, but it is not. It is a single loop circuit. This is one loop. Forget about the dashed lines. This is the loop, okay? This is the circuit. A single loop circuit consisting of two batteries and three resistors. Okay, let's see what it says. It says two real batteries, the dashed line is the battery. So we have one battery here and one battery here. 
but they are real batteries, so each one of them has its own internal resistance. Two real batteries with some internal resistances, which are these, are shown in figure three. Find the potential difference between points A and B. Again, to find the potential difference, like we did in the previous problem, you have to find the current in that path. Now, how many paths do we have? We have one path here, or this path in here. The current in both is the same, so you have to find the current. And the current, this is a single loop circuit, the current will be the net EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. So let's find the current. This is question 13 in the final exam of the 171. Again, let's remind ourselves that this is a single loop circuit. So the current is equal to the net EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. The net is what? We have two EMFs. Do we add them or do we subtract them? Look at the directions of the polarities. This one here will give me a current going that way. This one will give me a current going this way. The two currents are opposite to each other, so we have to subtract them. The bigger minus the smaller. 24 minus 12 will be 12. So that is the net EMF. Divided by, the rest is just adding resistors. We have three resistors connected in series, add them. So we have 0.5 plus 4.5 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. That's the equivalent resistance. And therefore, the current is 12 over 6. That is 2 amperes. What is the direction of the current? Well, look at the bigger battery. The bigger battery is this one. It will give us a counterclockwise current. So the net current will be 2 amperes flowing counterclockwise. And now, find the potential differences between A and B. I will just take this branch in here, the direct branch that connects a and B, and let me redraw it here. Here is point A, and then we have a resistor, which is equal to 0.5 uh, ohms, and then I have a battery, whose value is equal to 12 volts, and then I have point B. Where is the current? We said that the current is going this way, so the current I is flowing in this direction. That's the I that they have there. Now, find VA minus VB. Let's do that. Start at A and go to B. Start at A and go to B. First thing, we come across this resistor. We are going in the direction of the current. Look at the arrows. In the direction of the current. So that is negative. How much is it? It's the current multiplied by the resistance IR. 2 times 0.5 is 1. Then I come across the battery going from the positive to the negative terminal. So that is a drop. That's a negative change. And how much is it? It's 12. And that will bring me to point B. So I want VA minus VB. Bring VB here. Take this to the other side. That will be 13 volts as we have it in here. So another problem on the calculation of the potential difference between two points in an electric circuit. Let's move next. Let's look at this problem. It says uh, the same, is it? It says three ideal batteries. Now they are ideal. They don't have internal batteries, uh, resistances. So we have three batteries. Connected in the circuit shown, if the potential of point A is 10 volts, find the potential at point B. Well, combine. Now, do we add? This one will give me a current that way. This one will give me a current that way. This one will give me a current that way. So they all give me currents in the same direction. Add them. 12 plus 12, 24. 24 plus 10, 34. The net EMF is 34. 
What about the resistances? 5 plus 10, 15. 15 plus 2, 17. So 34 over 17 is 2 amperes. That's the direction of the current. And the current is going in that direction. So start at A, go to B. Can we do it? First, we will have plus 12, and then minus 20, IR, 20. 12 minus 20 is minus 8. Minus 8 plus uh, 10. Uh, I'm missing the something here. Of what am I missing? We said 34, that's 2 amperes. So 12. Yeah. Yeah, okay. VA. VA. VA plus 12. Minus 10 times the current, 2, 20. Plus 10 is equal to VB. That's what he's looking for. So how much is VA? VA is 10. 10 plus 10, 20. That will cancel this. And I'm left with 12, which is what I have here. Okay, it's the same idea. Okay. Next. Another problem where we have to find the potential difference between two points. So let's see what do we have here. The problem here says five resistors, as you can see in here. Five resistors are connected as shown in figure eight. Find the potential difference VA minus VB. If the current through the 2.7 ohm resistor is 2.2 amperes, the current here is 2.2 amperes, and I have to find, I want to find, the potential difference between A and B. Ask yourself, how many paths can I take between A and B? Well, you can go this way, or you can go that way, okay? In either way, you have to know the current here and the current here. But do you want to know the current here? Not necessarily. If I go this way, I don't have to know the current there. But you will see that I have to find the current there to be able to find these two. So here is what I will do. I will first take this loop here. It's a closed loop. That's all I need. It's a closed loop. And I will use it to find the current passing in this branch in here. Why? Because then we will combine these two to find the current here, and again combine them to find the current here. Okay? So I must find the current in that loop. So we will start by considering the closed loop, which is this one here. This is question 17 in the final exam of term 173. So consider the closed loop. By the closed loop, I mean this one. So I am assuming that there is a current coming here. It will come to this junction split into two currents. And therefore the current here is that way. The current here is that way. I will start from this junction, go around the closed loop, and come back to it. What do I have? First, if I start here, I will come across this resistor going in the direction of the current. So that is minus, minus, I up 2.7 times 2.2. Then I will go across these two resistors. Again, it's the current. The current is going that way, but I'm going in the opposite direction. So that will be plus, plus, we have two resistors. They are in series. Combine them. 4.1 plus 2.4, that's 2.5, 6.5. 6.5. Ix. Let me call the current here Ix. So let me name the current so we can track the things. I will have a current I1 coming here. It will come to this junction and split into two currents. Okay, like this. 
and then I have something like this. I have another junction and another resistor and point B. This current here is called in the problem I. So let me stick to it. And I will call this IX. That's IX here. That is passing here. So what I did is I started here and went through this way. The sum of all of these, since I came back to the original point, is zero. And therefore, IX is equal to, you take this to the other side, 2.7 times 2.2 divided by 6.5. And that will give me the value of IX as equal to 0.91 amperes. So I know what is this one, which is the current coming here. And this is I. So how much is I1, which is the current passing through this one? The entering current is equal to the sum of the leaving currents. I1 is equal to Ix plus I1. Uh, sorry, Ix plus I. Ix is 0.91. And I is 2.2. So this is equal to 3.2. 11, huh? 3.11 amperes. Same thing, these two will combine to give me the current passing here. Let me call it I2. I2 is the same. It's Ix plus I, which like the previous one, will be equal to 3.11 amperes. Okay? Now I know what I need with regard to the currents. Let me now read the problem, which is what? Find the potential difference between A and B. So, start at A, go to B through any path. The path that I will take is this one. Okay? I will be going that way. So, let's do it. Start with A, VA, and then what? I come across this resistor going in the direction of the current. So that is negative. And how much is it? How much is this resistance? 3.2 multiplied by I1. I1 is equal to 3.11. And then I come across this resistor going in the direction of the current. So that's again a negative potential difference. IR, which is 2.2 multiplied by 2.7. 2.2 times 2.7. Continue. Now I go across this resistor in the direction of the current, so that is minus. And how much is it? The resistance is 3.6. And the current I2, I2 is equal to 3.11. That will bring me to point B. What am I looking for? The potential difference. He just wants the value. No positive or negative there. So VA bring VB here, and then take everything to the other side. It will be 3.2 times 3.11 plus 2.2 times 2.7 plus 3.6 times 3.11. And if you add all of these, you will have the answer as 27.1 uh, volts as the potential difference between these two points. Next, let's look at this problem. A multi-loop circuit, and we cannot reduce it because we have batteries in different branches. So let's read the problem. It says, in the circuit diagram of uh, figure 5, if the current I, where is I? This is I. If the current I is 0.5 amperes, find the potential difference VB minus VA. Okay, we want to find the potential difference VB minus VA. Apply the same procedure. You can take any path to go from B to A. How many paths do we have? We have one path, a second path, and a third path. Okay, we have three paths. Now here you have to be smart and pick one of them. If I go through this path, okay, do I know the current here? 
Yes, I know the current. That's 0.5. But I don't know the current here. So I have an unknown. If I go through this path, then I don't know the current here, and I don't know the current here. It will be more problematic. I will need two unknowns. If I take this one here, then I need the current here all over this branch. There is no branching, no junctions. So all over here, the current is the same, which is 0.5 amperes. Great. I know the current here. Then I know the battery. I need nothing else. So that is the smart way to go. You will need no time there. How much is the current here? The current is going that way. Look at the arrow. So the current is going that way. I am going opposite to that. So that will be plus 10 times 0.5 is 5. Then I come across this one going opposite to the polarity. So that's minus 10. 5 minus 10 is minus 5. He just wants the value. The value is equal to 5 volts. Note that we didn't write a single equation. Just look at the uh, circuit and think of it conceptually. As I said, you can pick any loop, any path, according to whatever is convenient to uh, the problem. We next look at uh, this problem here that says, what is the potential difference? See how many problems do we have in the final on the potential differences. What is the potential difference between the points A and B, which are these, okay? I.e. find VA minus VB, doesn't matter because there is no plus and minus there. So VB minus VA or VA minus VB, he is only looking for the value. Find the potential difference between these two points in the circuit shown. Well, this is a circuit which I can reduce to a single loop circuit because there is only one, one uh, EMF there. So let me think of this problem. I have two resistors here, okay? Don't, don't be uh, taken away by the values. 3 plus 3 is 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. So I have two resistors connected in parallel, and they are identical, 6 and 6. What is their equivalent resistance? Two identical resistors connected in parallel. Their equivalent resistance is half of them. If each one of them is 6, the equivalent resistance is 3. So I have the battery connected to a single equivalent resistance, which is equal to 3. What's the current? 24 over 3 is equal to 8. And therefore, I have a current of 8 amperes coming out of the battery. It will come to here, see two identical resistors. And therefore, it will split equally. I will have 4 amperes here and 4 amperes here. That's all I need. So, the current here is equal to 4, and the current here is equal to 4. Let me isolate what is between A and B and just calculate what I need. I will just isolate this part in here. So, I have point A, then I have a 3 ohm resistor, I have a junction there, and then I have a 1 ohm resistor, and then I have point B. The currents are going in this direction. Current coming from the battery will split. How much is the current? As I said, the current in each one of them is equal to uh, 4 amperes. So start at A, VA minus, okay, the current is there. I'm going with the current. 3 times 4 is 12. Then I come here. I'm going opposite to the current. The current is downward. I'm going up. So that will be plus 1 times 4 is 4. That will bring me to B. So VA minus VB minus 12 plus 4 is minus 8. Take it to the other side. That is equal to 8 volts like we have it there. So we have here a combination of conceptual calculations, but then at the end we have to do some easier calculations to find the answer. Next, we have another problem with potential differences. That says... In the section of a circuit, we have a big circuit. One branch of it is shown in here. In the section of a circuit, shown in figure 8, VB minus VA is equal to 4 volts. Find the magnitude and direction 
of the current in the two ohm resistor. We want the direction and the uh, magnitude of the current. Well, I will assume that since this is a bigger uh, battery, this is an assumption. If I get a positive answer, means my assumption is correct. This is a bigger battery, so the current will be going in that direction, the net current, which is toward the right, toward the right. We will see. So here is the situation. The branch can be redrawn as follows. is uh, question 18 in the final exam of term 191. So starting at B, VB, VB, and then I come across this resistor going in the direction of the current. I assume that it is to the right. So I'm going in the direction of the current. That would be a negative potential difference minus I R, R is equal to 10, I is what I'm looking for. Then we come to this battery from the negative to the positive, that's an increase, so plus 12. Then I go through this resistor in the direction of the current, so that's minus I R, which would be minus 2 I, minus 2 I. And then I come across this battery uh, going from the positive to the negative, so that's a decrease, and therefore it's a negative change, minus 4, and then I come to point A. What am I given? Am I, I am given VB minus VA, so let me bring VA here, take everything to the other side. VB minus VA is equal to 12 minus 4 is 8. You take it to the other side, that will be minus 8, okay? And then I have minus 12i, take it to the other side, that would be plus 12i. And therefore i, the current in the circuit, is equal to vb minus va, and then I take this one there, plus 8, divided by 12. How much is that? vb minus va is equal to 4, so 4 plus 8 over 12, that is equal to 1 ampere. It's a positive answer, so my original assumption is correct. It's equal to 1 ampere flowing towards the right in this branch of the circuit. The next problem says a 25 ohm bulb, bulb lumber, so we consider it as a resistor, a 25 ohm bulb uh, is connected across the terminals of 12 volt battery having 3.5 ohm internal resistance. Find the ratio of the power of the battery that is dissipated, lost, across the internal resistance to the total power. The situation, there is no figure in there. You can easily sketch it, okay? We have a real battery, okay? A real battery, so it has its own internal resistance, and it is connected to this bulb, okay? That is the external resistor R. So this is the bulb, and that's the internal resistance of the battery. The battery will supply a current I that will flow in this circuit. The electrical energy provided by the battery is wasted, is lost, is dissipated as thermal energy, as heat in these resistors. So we want to know how much heat, how much is how much of the power provided by the battery is lost as heat it, its own internal resistance, okay? So we will start by finding, first of all, definitely, the current flowing in the circuit. This is a sim simple single loop circuit. So the current is equal to the EMF over the internal resistance. This is the second major exam of the 191. How comes it is? I don't think this is second major. This is always in the final. It's never in the second major. Chapter 27 is always in the final. So the current is equal to the EMF divided by the equivalent resistance. The EMF is equal to 12 volts 
and the equivalent resistance, the sum of these two, we have 25 plus 3.5, that's 28, 28.5. So the current supplied by the battery, okay, did I have it or did I calculate it as a uh, symbolic? Okay, let's see. This is equal to, we can easily calculate it. Yeah, it is equal to point four twenty one amperes. So let's see the problem carefully. Find the ratio of the power of the battery that is dissipated across the internal resistance to the total power. The total power provided by the battery, the power provided by a battery, is equal to I times E, IV, which we had in chapter 26. Now V is that. The power dissipated in the internal resistance of the battery, that is this one, the power dissipated in a resistor is equal to I squared multiplied by R. So he wants the ratio of this to that. The ratio of the power dissipated in the internal resistance of the battery to the total power provided by the battery. What is that equal to? That's I squared times a small r divided by I times E. This will cancel that, and that will be I r divided by E, which will be equal to 0.421 times the internal resistance, 3.5, divided by the EMF of the battery, which is 12 volts. And if we put the numbers, that will be 0.123 as we have. So what's the idea here? The battery is providing some power. That's given by this. 12%, 12 of that power is dissipated in the battery itself, okay, as thermal energy, as heat in the, power, in, in the battery itself. And the remaining, which is 87.7, will be dissipated in the pump itself. So that's the basic idea we have in this problem. We now come to uh, some conceptual problems. Okay, I'll conclude with it. Our discussion of Kirchhoff rules. It says, two resistors, R1 and R2, with R1 greater than R2, are connected to a battery. First, individually, then in series, and then in parallel. Rank those arrangements according to the amount of current through the battery least first. If I want, what, what, what is he looking for, the current? The least current goes with the highest resistance. The least current goes with the highest resistance. Well, when do we have, we have two resistors, when do we have the highest resistance? When we combine them in series. There it is. So we have A, C, and D. Now we are limiting. And then what? The least will be when they are connected in parallel. So series, something in between parallel. Series, something in between parallel. Series, no. Series, something in between parallel. So now I limited my answers to A and D. Which of the two? The beginning and the end are the same. I have to look at what is in between. R1 and R2. R1 is greater than R2, so the current through it will be less, and therefore that's the correct arrangement that we have there. Next we look at this conceptual problem that says, two light bulbs, there they are, we treat them like resistors, with power ratings of 40 and 100 watts. Okay, that's always written on any lab. If you if you buy it, you will find the power rating on it, are connected in series to a 110 volt source. Then, which of the following statements is true? This is a series combination. What is the same in the series combination? The current is the same, but the potential difference will be different. The current in the 100 ohm, uh, the 100 watt bulb, is the same as that in the 40 watt bulb? Yes, because they are connected in series. That's the correct one. Let's look at the rest. The current is less? No, they are the same. The current is greater? No, they are the same. So what is left? C and D. The voltage drop across the 100 watt is the same as that in the 40. No. 
in the series combination, the voltage will be different. So that's incorrect. Both bulbs have the same energy dissipation rate, the same power. Well, what is the power through a resistor? I squared multiplied by R. I is the same, but R is different, and therefore the power will not be the same. Finally, we come to this conceptual problem, which says identical batteries are connected in three different arrangements. One, two batteries, three batteries, to the same light bulb as shown in figure five. Assume that the batteries have no internal resistance. Rank the arrangements according to the current flowing through the bulb greatest fairest. Well, as you can see, they are all tied because in all of them, this is uh, a parallel combination. This is also parallel, this is parallel. So the potential, the potential, the potential will be the same and therefore <clears throat> the current will be the same in all three situations. And that brings us to the end of the first part of chapter 27, which was about basically multi-loop circuits and their analysis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's start with our lecture today. Today we have uh, lecture 33, which is the third and last lecture we have in chapter 27, which is also the last lecture we have in electricity. Today's lecture is about a very important type of circuits that are called RC circuits, and we will see why are they called RC circuits. So here we consider the circuit shown here which consists of a capacitor connected to a resistor and both are connected to an EMF or battery uh, E and there is a switch that can be toggled between two positions so we can connect or disconnect the battery and we will assume that we take this circuit with the capacitor initially uncharged so the capacitor is initially uncharged now like we saw in chapter 25 if you want to charge the capacitor we close the switch at point S, so we connect this path in here, so the battery becomes connected to the uh, capacitor, but now not directly, but rather through the resistor R. And therefore, we have what we call an RC, this is the name there, an RC series circuit, because we can also put the resistor that way, parallel to the capacitor, but we are not considering that here we are considering the series RC circuit. Now, as soon as the circuit is complete, if we close the switch S to position A, connect the battery, what will happen is that the charge that's driven by the battery begins to flow between the capacitor plates and the battery terminals, uh, establishing what we call uh, an electric current. The current that is provided by the battery increases the charge Q on the capacitor plates and therefore, like we have uh, from chapter 25, uh, Q is equal to CV, so the potential difference between the two plates of the capacitor is equal to Q over C. C is constant. As Q increases due to the charging process, the potential difference between the plates of the capacitor also increases and its value as we can see in here. This process will continue until we reach the point where the potential difference between the plates of the battery is equal to the potential difference between the terminals, sorry, when the potential difference between the plates of the capacitor is equal to the potential difference between the terminals of the battery, okay? So the potential difference between the plates of the capacitor is equal to the EMF of the, of the battery. In that case, the current will be zero because there is no more electric field to drive the charges. The potential here is equal to the potential there. The potential here is equal to the potential there. Potential difference is zero. Is zero. Remember that the electric field, by definition from chapter 24, is minus dV by dx. So, if the potential is the same, the change or the difference in potential is zero, there will be no more electric field to drive the charges and the current becomes zero. And at that point, 
you can see that at that point, when the capacitor is fully charged, the potential difference between the plates of the capacitor is equal to the EMF of the battery, and therefore the charge at that point is equal to C multiplied by E, and that is the maximum charge we have on the capacitor. So we start with uncharged capacitor, Q is equal to zero, Q will increase with time until it reaches this value. And here you can see the effect of the resistor. If the resistor were not there, this charging process is instantaneous. It will not take any time, like we studied in chapter 25. Now, if you want to control this charging process to make it slow or quick, we introduce the resistor, and that will control the time, as we will see from the time constant. Remember that if we have the charge as a function of time, we can find everything else. We can find the current. The current, as we studied in chapter 26, is dq by dt. So if you have q as a function of time, take its derivative and you get the current flowing in the circuit. The potential difference between the plates of the, uh, of the capacitor is q over c. So if I know q, I know v. Also, I can know what is the electric potential energy stored inside the capacitor. That's something we had in chapter 25. It's equal to Q squared over 2C. So again, if I have Q as a function of time, square it, divide it by 2C, and you have the equation for the potential energy stored in the capacitor. So the basic quantity is the charge as a function of time. We need to determine this quantity as a function of time. The question is, how do we find the charge as a function of time? This is now a dynamic circuit. This is an AC circuit, not a DC circuit, because the current is changing. It starts from zero and increases, changes, or decreases until it becomes zero. So this is an AC current. How do we determine the charge in that case? To do that, we will apply Kirchhoff rules to the circuit that we have here. So let's look very uh, simply at the uh, equation we have here. If we apply Kirchhoff rules to this, we just have a single loop circuit. And then we start at this point. The first thing we come across is E. Then we go through the resistor in the direction of the current. That's minus I times R. And then we come across the capacitor going from high to low potential. So that's negative. And how much is the potential difference across the uh, capacitor is Q over C, and this is equal to zero. So we can multiply by C and minus one. This will be Q plus R C into I minus C E is equal to zero. And now remember that I is the derivative of Q as a function of time. We put that here, so we have Q as a function of time plus RC dQ by dt is equal to C times E. This is the equation that we are looking for that we get from Kirchhoff rules. But there is a problem here. It's not a simple equation. It's an equation that connects a quantity with its derivative. How do we solve these equations? These are known as differential equations. They are extremely important in any branch of physics, in any branch of science or engineering. And therefore, you will spend a whole course, a whole math course, studying how to solve such an equation. It could be math 202 or math 260, depending on your major. But you have to take a whole course on how to solve these differential equations. So this is not our subject here. It's way advanced for us. We gave it to somebody, applied the techniques of differential equations, and gave us the solution. The solution we are provided with is that the charge that comes from the solution of this equation, the charge as a function of time, this is what we are looking for, is equal to the maximum charge, which is C times E. OK, there it is, multiplied by 1 minus E exponential minus t over tau. Okay, we don't know how we got this equation. Somebody who knows knowledge in differential equations 
solve that equation and got this as the solution. What you care about more is that, is this a solution of that differential equation? How do you verify that? Take the derivative of this, plug it in there, and take u itself, plug it in there, and see that they add up to c times e. If that is the case, then that's the solution. Another thing that we can do to verify, look at <clears throat> the time behavior. <clears throat> By the time behavior, we mean what will happen at time t equal to zero, and what will happen at time t equal to infinity. You have these equations in the formula sheet. This is how you know which is which. At time t equal to zero, we started with an uncharged capacitor. So Q must be zero. Is that the case here? If I put t equal to zero, e to the power zero is one. One minus one is zero, the charge is zero. Yes, that's satisfied. What about if I wait for a very long time when the difference in potential between the place of the capacitor is equal to the potential difference between the terminals of the battery. We said at that point, V is equal to the EMF of the battery. And therefore, Q is equal to C times E. Is that the case here? If I put T equal to minus, uh, uh, T equal to infinity, and infinity, by the way, could be just one second, okay? You don't have to wait light years. Because for these circuits, one second is quite infinite time. So. If I put infinity there, e to the minus infinity is zero, I have one, and I get the maximum charge, which is c times e, exactly like I have here. So indeed, although we did not solve mathematically this equation, we have proved that it satisfies the differential equation, and it satisfies the physics at time t equal to zero and time t equal to infinity. So this is the time behavior at zero infinity. We already did that, and make sure that this is indeed the solution. Here we have a quantity in the equation that's called tau. Tau is called the time constant of the circuit. And it is the product of the resistance and the capacitance. Okay, you can verify to yourself using dimensional analysis of physics 101 that if you multiply resistance by capacitance, the dimension that you get is time. I did that in the uh, video of lecture 33, you can do it and verify that this product has the dimension of time, which is the dimension that we have there. So this is called the time constant of the circuit. And this controls how slow or how fast is the charging process. If you want it to be very fast, you should make tau very small, very short time, and therefore pick and RC to give you the, the time you are looking for, one millisecond, one microsecond, one minute. Okay, you can control that from here. If you want it to be a long time, long charging process, then again you can do that from the control of these two quantities. Now we have Q, we can calculate everything else. The potential difference across the capacitor is Q over C. Here is Q divided by C. The potential difference, uh, the current in the circuit is dQ by dt. The potential difference across the resistor, Ohm's law, I times R. So I is the derivative of Q multiplied by R, and that's the potential difference across the uh, resistor. The potential energy stored in the capacitor is Q squared over 2C. Take this equation, square it, the whole equation, divide it by 2C, and that will give you the potential energy stored in the capacitor. Graphically, this is what we have. Okay, here is the charge as a function of time. So at time t equal to zero, it is uncharged. Then it reaches its maximum value, which is equal to C times E. The current behaves like this. At time t equal to zero, we have maximum current, which is the current just passing through the resistor. No capacitor yet. And this will decrease as the charging process goes on until it becomes zero at time t equal to infinity. Look at infinity here. It is only 10 milliseconds, 0.01 of a second is the infinity of this particular case. The second process that we can consider is discharging discharg dis the capacitor. What we discussed here was a charging a capacitor, connecting a capacitor to a battery to charge it. Now let's do the opposite. That is, we start with an already charged capacitor and we want to discharge it, take this energy away out of it. Okay, so that's the 
second process, discharging the process, uh, a capacitor. So here we assume that the capacitor, we start with a fully charged capacitor at time equal to zero, and then discharge it, dissipate, lose the energy that is stored in it in the form of thermal energy or heat in the resistor. How do we do that? Well, instead of connecting the switch to the battery, connect it this way. So the battery is removed, now the battery is isolated. The only thing connected to the capacitor is the resistor. Now it is fully charged, so it behaves like a battery. And the energy of the battery will be dissipated or converted to thermal energy or heat in the resistor. And this process will continue until all the energy stored in the capacitor will be lost or wasted as thermal energy in the resistor. So that is the discharging process. We can go through the same analysis again to find the charge as a function of time. If we do so, in this case, uh, the charge as a function of time is equal to Q0, which is the initial charge, multiplied by e to the minus t over tau. So let me write this. In the discharging process, charge as a function of time is equal to the initial charge into e to the minus t over tau. How did we get this equation? Again, it's not our business in physics 102. But it is our business to prove that this belongs or gives us the behavior we expect in the discharging process. Look at t equal to zero and infinity. At time t equal to zero, e to the power zero is one, so q is equal to q zero. Yes, that's the initial charge. At time t equal to infinity, e to the minus infinity is zero, and therefore the charge is zero. All the charge stored in the capacitor is completely dissipated, so the charge is equal to zero. And here is the graphical situation. This is the charge as a function of time at time t equal to zero. This is the initial charge, which decreases exponentially until it becomes zero as time approaches infinity. So these are RC circuits and their time behavior. What we will do now is look at exam problems related to RC circuits and their analysis. Most of the problems we will see are or belong to the charging process. Very few problems belong to the discharging process because this is the uh, situation in the last three years. But if you go to older years, you will find more problems about the discharging process. So let's now look at some exam problems. And we will start here with this question. And you have to read the questions very carefully. And the first thing you should realize is, is this a charging process or a discharging process? Because each one of them will have its own set of equations. And the language sometimes can be very misleading. So you really have to read the problem carefully and understand what is meant in it. The question here says, a capacitor charging circuit as shown in figure four, has a time constant, RC, that's the time constant, of 40 milliseconds. When the switch is closed, closed means here because this is a charging process, so now we are dealing with a charging process. When the switch is closed, at time t equal to zero, to charge the 50 megafarad capacitor, the initial current at time t equal to zero, where is that? Let's remember the figure. Where is that? That's this current here in the charging process. The initial current at time t equal to zero, when we just close the switch there, is 65 times 10 to the minus 3 amperes, or 65 milliamperes. What is the potential difference across the capacitor at a time of 20 milliseconds after closing the switch? Assume the capacitor was completely uncharged when the switch was closed. So what we want here, we want to find the potential difference across the capacitor, and what we are given is the uh, current at time t equal to zero, and we are given the time constant, and we are given the value of the capacitance. Let's first do the obvious, and that is to find how much is the resistance R, because we know that. So we use the time constant. Let me write the number here. 
This is question 16. In the final exam of term 182, the time constant is equal to RC, so R is equal to the time constant over C. The time constant is there, 40 times 10 to the minus 3, and the capacitance is 50, 10 to the minus 5, so 5 times 10 to the minus 5. 40 over 5 is 8, and then this will be times 100. This will be 800 ohms as the resistance of the uh, resistor. Okay? Okay. Right. So that is the resistance, <clears throat> 800 ohms. Now, this is a charging process. What is the equation for the charge in the charging process Q of T is equal to the maximum charge we will attain, which is Ce, into 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. Let me open up this one because I want to find the current. The current is the derivative of Q. So let me open up this one. This will be Ce minus Ce into this. Ce e to the minus t over tau. The current, this equation is there in the formula sheet. So you have to know how you start from there and get what you want like I'm doing here. It's the derivative of q with respect to time. This is constant, its derivative is zero. Then I have minus c times e, and the derivative of the exponential is minus, there it is, and then the constant is one over tau, and then we have the exponential again. I hope you have studied that in your calculus. I, I'm guessing so. So the negative will cancel, and I have C times E. Uh, 1 over tau is 1 over this, so 1 over RC, E to the minus T over tau. So C will cancel, and I have E over R into E to the minus T over tau. Always make sense of what you are doing. Use dimensional analysis. This is the current, okay? So the current through the resistor, it just this is dimension, let's take it away. V over R. I is equal to V over R. What is that? That's Ohm's law. So this is indeed in accordance with Ohm's law. Now the problem says that at time t equal to zero, when the switch is closed, the current is that much. So I zero, I zero at time t equal to zero, is equal to what? Put the time t equal to zero. e to the power zero is one. So this is E over R. And therefore, the EMF of the battery is I zero times R. That's the same. The thing I can get out of it. Now let me see. The current is 65. The current I zero is 65 <coughs> times 10 to the minus three. Okay. Which I can write as 6.5 10 to the minus two. And the resistance, already we found it here, 8 times 10 to the power 2. So the powers will cancel, 6.5 times 8 will give me the EMF, and it will be 52 volts. So I found the resistance of the resistor, and I found the EMF of the battery, and there is what I have. Now let me go back to the, to the question. All of this was on the side. Let's now answer the question. The question says, what is the potential difference across the capacitor at this time? What is the potential difference across a capacitor? It is the charge on the capacitor divided by C. Where is the charge on the capacitor? Well, <clears throat> here is the equation for the charge. Divide that by C. So, that will leave me with E minus E into 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. So I can take the e outside and it will look like this. Okay? Take this out 1 minus. And now you want to find the potential difference across the capacitor plates at that time. So let's do it. Let's substitute. The EMF of the battery is 52 multiplied by 1 minus exponential you either write it as E or exponential, minus, the requested time is 20 to the minus 3, 
and the time constant is 40, 10 to the minus 3. 40, 10 to the minus 3. This will cancel, and this will be 52 into 1 minus e to the minus 0.5. Okay, this is 0.5. So plug that in your calculator. I'd like you to do that now. e to the power minus 0.5, how much is it? And then subtract it from 1, and then multiply by 52, and that's the answer that you should get. What is the maximum potential difference across the capacitor plates? It will be 52. That's when we reach infinite time. The uh, potential difference across the capacitor plates will be equal to the EMF of the battery. Let's now move on and look at this next question, which says a capacitor is being charged, charging process. A capacitor is being charged through a 12 ohm resistor, here is R, using a 10 volt battery, that's the EMF. What will be the current, again he is looking for the current, what will be the current in the circuit when the capacitor has acquired one fourth of its maximum charge. So it is really a twisted uh, problem, you really have to do many algebra here, so let's see that. Let me keep the equation for the current, okay? I need it. And then continue with whatever is given there. This is the current in a charging RC circuit. The problem says, what will be the current? And I'm not given the time. I have to work out the, the time. What, what, what's the time I'm looking for? It's the time when the capacitor has acquired one-fourth of its maximum charge. Here is the equation for the charge on the capacitor. I want this to be one-fourth of the maximum. Remember that this is the maximum charge, this one here. Okay, this is Q max, as we saw in our derivations. So I want to find the time at which this one is equal to one-fourth of this one. Okay, that's the problem. So let's do that. We want Q to be QM over 4. So what's the time? Complete the equation. This is Q max into 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. Q max will cancel. And what do I have? I have 0.25 is equal to 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. So let me take this here, that one there, e to the minus t over tau is equal to 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75, which is 3 over 4. So now, let me take the reciprocal of both sides. The reciprocal will get rid of the negative sign. So I have e to the t over tau is equal to 4 over 3. And the next step is to take ln of both sides. Look at the type of algebra we are dealing with today. That's what you need with RC circuits. So let me take ln of both sides. This will come down. So I have T over tau. Ln of E is equal to 1. And then I take ln of the other side, ln of 4 over 3. So the time I'm looking for, tau, uh, sorry, T, is equal to tau times ln of 4 over 3. How much is tau? How much is tau? A capacitor is being through a 12 ohm resistor. Okay. What will be the current? Let's see that. So, this is the time I'm looking for. Now let me go to the equation for the current. What is what will be the current. This is what I'm looking for. Now I know the time. So let me find the current. The current is equal to E over R. E over R. Do I have these? Fortunately, yes. This is E and this is R. So let me now continue times E. I will write it as exponential of the minus is there. How much is T? T is there. Tau ln of 4 over 3 divided by tau. 
So I don't have to know the time constant, it will disappear. This would cancel that. And what I have is E over R, which is 10 over 12, 10 over 12, E to the minus ln of 4 over 3. And I think, uh, uh, how much is that? We just uh, calculated E to the minus ln of 4 over 3. So let me just make sure we get the right things here. 4 over 3, and then ln of that, and then multiplied by a negative sign, and then exponential of that, exponential of this, multiplied by 10 over 12, and that will be 0.625, approximately 0.63, okay? <clears throat> Let's move on. To this one here, which says, switch S in figure 7 is closed at time t equal to 0. So if it is closed, then we have the battery there. This is again a charging RC circuit. The switch is closed at time t equal to 0 to begin charging. Here it is explicitly. This is a charging process to begin charging an initially uncharged capacitor 15 microfarad in value through a resistor R whose resistance is 20 ohms. So I have R and C, I can calculate tau if I need to. At what time is the potential difference across the capacitor double to that across the resistor? Okay, let's see what we want to find before even attempting to answer the question. What we want to find is spelled out in the last part. We want to find the time, T, at which the potential difference across the capacitor is double that across the resistor. So we want to have the potential difference across the, the capacitor to be twice the potential difference across the resistor. At what time, T, will we have this condition? So let's develop the strategy. You have to find an equation for VC, an equation for VR, and then substitute into this equality and find the corresponding time. So let's do that. Again, this is a charging process. So we will have the same equations as we have in here. This is the current, and that's the charge. So now we want to find the potential differences. I don't know if I changed the number there in the previous one, but the number you can read it there. Sometimes I forget that, so. Uh, let me write the correct number now, question 17. In the final of 171. Okay, that is I. Now, what is the potential difference across the capacitor? It's Q over C. So here is Q divided by C. That will be E that minus another E, E to the minus T over tau. That's the potential difference across the, uh, the, uh, the capacitor. The potential difference across the resistor is provided by Ohm's law, I, R. Where is I? Here is I multiplied by r. What is left is this thing, e times e to the minus t over tau. These are the quantities we need in here. So let's substitute them there. Vc, e minus e, e to the minus t over tau, is equal to twice this one in here. So 2e, e to the minus t over tau. We have set up the Necessary equation. Now let's proceed with algebra. So what do we have here? The EMF of the battery will cancel. I will leave this one here. Take this to the other side. 1 plus 2 is 3. So what, I, what I'm left with here is 1 is equal to 3 e to the minus t over tau. Okay? So now play with this equation. I will take this to the other side. So the negative will disappear. 
and this will be e to the t over tau is equal to 3. Take ln of both sides, t over tau ln e is 1, is equal to ln of the other side, which is ln of 3. So the requested time is tau ln 3, and tau is rc ln of 3, which will be uh, how much? Let's see that. 15 times 20 is uh, <clears throat> 3,000. Uh, 15 times 20 is 300, I think. 300 times 10 to the minus 6, the parad, the micro, into the minus 6, ln of 3. So this will be the answer that we have there. The two zeros will cancel that 10 to the minus 4, and 3 times ln 3 is equal to 3.3. Okay, so then we have another problem. Next, we look at uh, this problem here. Let's see what do we have. It says, a capacitor with an initial potential difference. So now uh, we have a discharging process. Okay? An initial charge, that means we will discharge it. So this is a discharging process. Already said very explicitly in the problem. So here we have a discharging process. A capacitor with an initial potential difference of 100 volts is discharged through a resistor when a switch between them is closed at time t equal to zero. How is that? Just to remind ourselves, this is when we close the switch. Where is that uh, circuit? When we connect it like this, okay? So this is a discharging process. Let's read the problem. It says, a capacitor with an initial potential difference of 100 volts is discharged through a resistor when a switch between them is closed at time t equal to zero. If at time t equal to 10 seconds, the potential difference across the capacitor, what is the potential difference across the capacitor Q over C? At time t equal to 10, the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to 1 volts. Find the potential difference across the capacitor at time t equal to 13 seconds, okay? So, first to fall, we realize that this is a discharging process, and then proceed from there. <clears throat> okay, so this is question 15. In the final exam of term 173. This is a discharging process. This charging process for which the charge as a function of time, we saw the equation at the beginning, is equal to Q0 e to the minus t over tau. The potential difference across the capacitor is Q over C. So V across the capacitor is equal to Q0 over C e to the minus t over tau. What I'm given here, we can call this the initial potential difference, which is the potential difference at time t equal to 0. If I put t equal to 0, that's what I get. So that's the initial potential difference. I will call it V0. And what is V0? The initial potential difference the 100 volts, e to the minus t over tau. So I am told that at time t equal to 10 seconds, the potential is 1 volts. So let me write this as V1, the potential across the capacitor at the first time, is equal to V0, e to the minus t1 over tau. And the second Potential difference, which is what is requested in the problem, at time t equal to 13, I will call it v2, so that is equal to v0, e to the minus t2 divided by t. Okay, now I want to find this one, given this one. So how do we get this one? Well, we first have to know what is the time constant of the circuit because I need it down here. So the time constant, how do we do that? 
let's divide this. Uh, what, what will I do? I will bring this one down here, take that one there to get rid of the negative sign. So e to the t1 over tau is equal to v0 over v1. And therefore t1 over tau is equal to ln of v0 over v1. And therefore the time constant is equal to T1 divided by ln of V0 over V1. Can I get that? Well, <coughs> T1 is the, the first time, which is the 10 seconds, so 10 seconds, divided by ln of V0 is the 100 volts, V1 is the potential at this time, which is equal to 1 volt. Okay, so we have ln of 100, let me do that, ln 100 and then I have 10 over that that will give me the time constant of the circuit it's 2.17 seconds now let me use it here we want to find V2 so let's put the numbers V0 is 100 times exponential of minus I want to find the potential at time t equal to 13 so this will be 13 over the time constant, that's what they found here, 2.17. Okay, let me just continue the calculation, 2.17, and then take the negative of this, and then take the exponential of this, and multiply it by 100, that would be uh, something incorrect in here. Why is that? 13 over 2.17, and then the negative of that, and then the exponential of that, yes, and then times 100, yes, I get 0.25 volts as the value of the potential at that particular time. Okay, again, there is nothing difficult today. It's just algebraic manipulations of the equations. Okay, now let's move into this uh, problem. We saw many of problems like this one in the last lecture with Kirchhoff rules, how to calculate the potential difference between two points in a circuit, except that today we have the additional capacitor there. All what we did before or yesterday was just resistors and batteries. Now we have a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. So the problem says a segment, a part, a branch of a circuit diagram is shown in the figure here. At a particular instant, if R is 2 kilo ohms, C is 4 millifarad, E of the battery is 8 volts, and Q across the capacitor, the charge on the capacitor, is 20 milli coulomb, and I, the current passing, is 3 milliamperes, what's the potential difference VA minus VB? Indeed, I'm given everything. Only thing left is uh, to find the potential difference and watch the signs. Minus 9 plus 9. Minus 7 plus 7. So you have to get the correct answer here. Okay, this is question 17. Question 17 in the final exam of term 181. We start at point B. Uh, we can start at, at A or B. Let's start at A and move to B. So start at A. VA. Then I go across the resistor. I'm going from A to B. So I'm going across the resistor opposite to the current. There is the current. So this is plus. Plus. I, R, and then I go across the, the capacitor. I'm going from the positive plate to the negative plate. So I have a decrease in potential across the capacitor. And how much is that? Like we saw in the previous problem, the potential difference across the plates of a capacitor is Q over C. And then I come to this battery, going from the negative to the positive terminal, there is an increase in potential, so it is positive. And how much is that? That's E, and that will finally bring me 
to the second point, which is point B. What I want is VA minus VB. Bring VB here, take everything to the other side. So VA minus VB is equal to minus IR plus Q over C minus E. Now put the numbers. I is 3 milli amperes. This is 2 kilo ohms. So the milli will cancel the kilo. And I have minus, how much is the current? 3 R is 2. 3 times 2. Plus, how much is Q? Q is 4 millifarad and C, uh, where is Q? Q is 20 millicoulomb and C is 4 millifarad. I need the quotient. The milli will cancel the milli and I have Q over C which is 20 over 4. 20 over 4 minus E, the EMF of the battery is 8 volts so that is there. And therefore, this is minus 6 plus 5 minus 8. How much is that? That's minus 1 minus 8 minus 9 volts as the potential difference between these two points, points in this branch of the circuit. The next problem is this conceptual problem, which says if the capacitor in an RC circuit is replaced by two identical capacitors connected in series. Now let's remember chapter 25. Two identical capacitors connected in series. What is the equivalent uh, capacitance? It will be half of them. So the, the capacitance will decrease. Okay, that's what is happening here. Find the correct statement. The time constant will decrease. Yes, because the time constant is equal to R times C. If you connect them in series, the equivalent resistance is C over 2. So you are reducing this by a factor of 2, and therefore the time constant will also reduce or decrease by a factor of 2. The time constant will be double. No, that's the opposite. The time constant will be unchanged. No, it will change. The time constant will be tripled. No, it will not be. It will not decrease by a factor of 4. So that's the answer there. Very straightforward. Next, let us look at this conceptual problem, which says figure 5 shows three circuits where all batteries, all batteries, uh, resistors, and capacitors are identical. Rank the circuit according to uh, the charging time constant, RC, of the circuit greatest value. So here is the time constant which of these three circuits has the largest, which has the smallest. So we want to rank them where we have the largest fares. Okay, let's see what do we have. This is where we have two capacitors connected in series. And this is where we have the so two, sorry, two resistors connected in series. And here we have two resistors connected in parallel. And then here we have some strange arrangement. Now the quantity that will determine the time constant, it's not the capacitance now, but rather the resistance. Because in all of them, we just have one capacitance, but we have two resistors. Let's start with one. Two resistors connected in series. The equivalent resistance will increase. If it increases, the time constant will increase, will double indeed. So, number one is the highest equivalent resistance. Two resistors connected in series. That's the highest equivalent resistance. And hence, it corresponds, largest R corresponds to the largest time constant. So we should have number one as the fairest choice. <coughs> Where is that? That's A, B, and E. Okay, we exclude C and D. Next, let's see what we can see. What we can say, I don't want to deal with three, it's a little bit com uh, complicated, but two is very obvious. Two resistors connected in parallel, their equivalent resistance will be half. So in two, I am reducing R by a factor of two. So what will happen to the time constant? It will also decrease by a factor of two. 
So this should be, number two, should be the smallest one. This would be somewhere between series and, uh, series and uh, parallel. So if number one is the maximum time constant, number two will be the minimum time constant. So I should have the ranking going as one something two. Two should be at the end. Where is that? We agreed that it will be A, B, or E. Okay, where, which of these three will we have one something two? It's number A. Okay, there it is. In B, we have one, two, three. No, three is not less than uh, two, so that is incorrect. Two and three will not be tie, so this is incorrect, and the correct answer is uh, that one there. So that's the only choice that satisfies uh, these requirements. And that brings us to the end of our discussion today, the end of RC circuits, the end of chapter 27, the end of our discussion of electricity. Next time, inshallah, we will be going into our discussion of the last part of the course, which is about magnetism. So that's where I will leave it here today, and I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow.